This is how to learn Flutter in three hours. The first 45 minutes will be used to install Flutter on Windows and Mac. Then I will show you all the basics with Flutter and we will have a practical exercise at the end. You have all the chapters of this three hour video inside the description. Without further ado, let's start this. I will show you how to install Flutter in this video. First, you need to go on Google and you will type Flutter. You will then go inside the website flutter.dev and you will click on the blue button at the right top corner. Good. Now you will click on Windows. Inside this page, you will scroll down and you will find the blue button. We will click on this one after we download Git. So I will go up a little bit and you see we'll, you will have a link Git for Windows. You click on this and this is to download Git. We will click on the 64-bit Git and we will download this one. I will click on the installation. Install Git only if you don't have it on your computer. If you already have it, you don't need to do this step. Okay, after that, we will click on all the next pages. So you will see it's like 10 to 10 pages maybe. We will click next, next, next. Just verify the checkbox and the the, the stuff you want. All, all the basics is good for me. So I will click install. And now Git is installing inside my computer. Good. I will remove the check mark uh, view release note and I will click on finish. That's good. I will come back on the previous page and now we will click on the blue button. It's the SDK of Flutter. So this might take five to 10 minutes to download. Next, we will go inside our documents. Inside our documents, I will create a new document called Flutter Dev. Make sure to do exactly the same. Go inside your documents and create a Flutter Dev doc. Then you go inside your downloads, you find the SDK that you download, and you will click Extract All. We will browse to find the Flutter Dev document that we have just created. And you will say select, and then you will click extract. This will extract the Flutter SDK inside the new document that we have created, the Flutter Dev document. Okay, next we go inside the Flutter Dev document. So we are already inside. I will close the other page and we will go inside. We will click on Flutter. And then you will find Flutter console. Double click on this. You should have a page like this. Once you have this page, you will write inside the command Flutter doctor and you will press enter. This should load everything for Flutter. So this will download Flutter into your computer. This might take five to 10 minutes, but I will just I will fast forward this step to show you what happened at the end. You should have a check mark and Flutter next to it. Okay, good, Flutter has been installed. Next, what we need to do is go inside the environment variable in our computer. So we will edit the environment variable. You click on path and you click edit. And we will need to create a new path inside this one. I will show you where, uh, where to find the path. Go back inside your documents Flutter dev, Flutter, and we have the bin folder. You will shift and right click and you will say copy path. Next, inside your edit environment variable, you will click new and then you will paste what you just copy. It's the path of the Flutter dev, Flutter bin uh, folder. You will remove the quotation mark at the start and at the end and you should have something like this. You should have this and you will click uh, OK. Good. The goal of the path and you will click OK again. You can close the file and we can close the terminal. The goal of the path is to make sure that we can access Flutter from anywhere inside our computer now. If we open a new terminal, you can write Flutter Doctor and you will press Enter. This is to verify. And you can see we have the check mark with the Flutter right after. So that is good. This means Flutter has been installed successfully and the path inside the environment variable 
works fine. So this was how to download Flutter. We downloaded the SDK. In the next video, I will show you how to install Android Studio. See you in the next one. Bye. Let's install Android Studio. You will need this to be able to have the emulator inside your Windows. To download Android Studio, you will go back inside the Flutter documentation and you will scroll down a little bit after the blue square where we install Flutter. You will find Android Setup and you click on the Android Studio link. So you will click on the green button, download Android Studio. And now you will click I agree the term if you agree them. And this will download Android Studio. It might, it might take like five to 10 minutes also. Good. Once in, it's downloaded, you will click on the Android Studio link. And this will open the Android setup. It will load and it will have a pop-up. You will click on next multiple time in order to install Android Studio. So I will click next. I will decide where I save my Android Studio and I will click install. So you can do all the same step as I do inside your Windows uh, computer. You will click on next and you will click on finish when it's done. Now we have downloaded Android Studio. Now you can quit the internet page and a pop-up uh, should appear. You will click OK and now Android Studio is opening. Good. You can share the data if you want with Android Studio. I will click on Don't Send. Next, you will have the Welcome and I will click Next. You have the Standard or Custom installation. I will use the Standard. I will say Next. I will use the Dark Mode because I prefer this. And I will click on Next also. Then you have the Finish button. Again, this can take five to 10 minutes to install and I will just fast forward for you. Good. Now we have installed Android Studio and we can, click, we can click on the button Finish. This is our Android Studio setup. This is when you open Android Studio. You will click on Configure and you will go inside Settings. This will open a pop-up and inside this pop-up, you will need to go uh, on plugins. Once, once you click on plugins, you will have a search bar on the top and we need to have Flutter inside our Android Studio. So I will go in the search bar and I will write Flutter. So the first one should be the good one and you will click on install. And you will click accept if you accept the terms. So I will click accept. And next, you will have a little pop-up saying, do you want to install Dart also? I will click install because we need Flutter and Dart, both plugin. Good. Now we have installed Flutter inside our Android Studio and we can click restart IDE. So this means it will restart Android Studio. Uh, we have downloaded Flutter plugin and Dart plugin inside our Android Studio. In the next video, I will show you how to use the Android Studio emulator. See you in the next one. Bye. I will show you how to use the Android Studio emulator inside this video. Good. First thing first, uh, you remember we have installed Android Studio. Now we will click on the button, create a Flutter project. And you will click on the first one. You will click next. And now we have the project name. For now, we will just call it Flutter App Testing. Okay, next we need to have the Flutter SDK path. So this is where we install Flutter. We'll go inside our document, Flutter Dev, Flutter, and we will copy this link. If you remember, you should have downloaded Flutter the same way I did. So you will paste this. And now uh, if you want, you can click the three dot to find the file also, but that I just pasted. You will click on next. Right there, you have the package name. For now, we will keep it like this, but in further video, we will change the package name. I will click on finish, and this will create our first Flutter application. This is the main, uh, the main application that Flutter gave us when we start a first project. 
And right now, what we will try to do, you can click on uh, fix it. If you have this little pop-up, you will click on fix it. Good. And what we will try to do is to run the project Flutter, our first app, into the Windows emulator. The next step will be to click on AVD Manager. It's on the top corner right there. You will find the icon. This will open a pop-up. And if you don't have a virtual device installed, you will click on Create New Virtual Device. I will do it with you. Uh, we will use the Pixel 4 and I will click Next. But if you already have a virtual device, keep it like this. We will also download the Air version, which is the latest version of Android. I will click Download. I will click Accept and Next. This might take five minutes to download. You will click Finish. Good. After this, I will click Next. And we have the next, uh, the next pop-up. I will click Finish. Good. So we have Add a Virtual Device. After, I will click on the Play button to run the emulator. You might have the Unable to Launch. You click OK. Right now, I will just close Android Studio to try again. But the emulator might, yeah, exactly. The emulator will uh, open still. You might have another pop-up. I will just click OK. And you can see that I have started two emulator by accident. I will close one of them. I will close all the pop-up. And uh, this is just because uh, the computer I use right now is not the best one. So it's pretty slow. If you have a very good computer, this should not matter. So this computer is very slow. Next, I will reopen Android Studio. So Android Studio, I click on it, and this will reopen Android Studio. You can see that my computer is very slow, so it's very hard for the computer to run Android Studio and run the emulator at the same time. I will click on close the pop-up. And now you see the emulator have some problem. It happens sometime. If it does, just close it and restart. And now you will see it work. Good. Next, you will click on the play button uh, on the top of the screen. This will start the Flutter app. So when you click on it, this should start the Flutter app. This might take five minutes. If, you, if your computer is slow, it might take five minutes. And you can see you have your first Flutter app running on the emulator. I will then go inside the search bar of Windows and I will click CMD. This will open the command prompt and I will write Flutter Doctor. When the command is done, it will load a little bit. When it's done, you will see you have the check mark and it say connect device one available. So next step is to accept the Android licenses. So we will just copy this sentence, Flutter Doctor Android licenses, because we need to do this also. I will click enter. And now you, you will have a series of questions. I will say yes, 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 and yes. This is to accept all the licenses. Good. And I will retype Flutter Doctor once again. So now you see we have three check marks. We have the first one uh, near Flutter. This means Flutter is installed. We have another check mark near Android Studio uh, tool chains licenses. This is just the Android Studio license. So it's good. And we have the third check mark, which is around connected device. So everything is fine. And you see you have two X, red X near Flutter plugin and Dart plugin. The computer thinks think sometime that the plugin is not installed, but if you remember uh, on the previous video on Android Studio, we have installed these plugins, so everything is fine. Next, I will close the page and I will close the emulator. And yeah, in the next video, we will install Visual Studio code. The next step will be to install Visual Studio. This is where we will be able to code for our Flutter app. So you will go on internet and you will write Flutter uh, Visual Code. Then you will click on this link and you will download Visual Code. Because we are on Windows, we click on the Windows tab. And now this should download Visual Code Studio. You will click on it to install everything. 
we can close the internet page. And now you will say, but I will say I agree the argument. You can read them. I will click next. Uh, this is where it will be installed. I will click next and I will click next again. This is the installation. Good. Once is done, we will click on finish. And you can see that this will launch Visual Studio automatically. I will maximize the page. And now what we want to do is to open our Flutter project. So I will go in file, open folder like this. And if you remember, this is where we saved our project. So this is just a flashback. Okay, let's come back. So I will say open project and I will go inside. It was inside C user, the name of your user. And next you will find Android Studio project. This is the Flutter app testing that we have created. You see, this is the location where Android Studio save the project. This is what it look inside the Flutter app testing. You will open the Flutter app testing file. Good. This is our Flutter project. And next you can click on LIB for library and you click, you double click on main. This is your code for your Flutter app. It's the main code. I will click on search marketplace. You have see the pop-up that jump and I will install Dart and Flutter. If you miss the pop-up, you can click on extension the, on the left side and search for Flutter and uh, Dart. The next extension I will add is the awesome Flutter snippet. So I will download this. This is all useful extension that will make our life easier well, when, when we uh, code with Flutter. You will then install the bracket pair colorizer too. This will also make our life easier with Flutter. And yeah, that's pretty much it. We will go back inside our files and you have again your main.dart. I will double click on it. You see the difference now. We have a colorful code and we also have all our bracket with colors. You will then click on the play button and you will select your pixel that you have created. I will use the pixel three. This will use, this will open the pixel. It will have a pop-up that I will just close. And we have the emulator. So it's a failed to launch. So I will try again. I will click on play again. It, it should open Flutter inside our emulator. Our Flutter project should run on our emulator. This is the Flutter basic project and it may take five minutes to load if your computer is slow. Then you have the little pop-up Dart uh, dev tool. I will say never ask because I don't want to use the dev tool right now. Yeah, this is our emulator with the Flutter app inside. We have run this one with Visual Studio this time. Good. We will open again the CMD, so the command prompt. And inside you will write Flutter Doctor. And you will press Enter. Okay, so this you can see that we have four check marks. The Flutter, the Android Studio toolchain, the VS code is now activated and we have a connected device. So that was it for the Visual Studio installation. Now we have set up everything for Flutter inside our Windows computer. We are ready to start learning how to code Flutter. So see you on the next video. Bye. In this video, I will show you how to install Flutter in your Mac. This video is for Intel Mac. If you have the M1 chip, check out the next video. First, you will go on flutter.dev. You will click on the blue button, get started on the top corner, and then you will find Mac OS. You will go down until you find the get the Flutter SDK, the blue button, and you will click on it. This will download Flutter. It, might, it may take five to 10 minutes. Then you will go inside Finder. Inside this one, you will go on documents. It's very important that you follow all these steps. You will go on documents. You will press command up. This will bring up, bring you to the, the home folder. And then you will press command up again, and you will take your home folder. Mine is called it MacBook, but yours will be your name, I guess. And you will click on MacBook. 
In MacBook, you will create a new file called Flutter Dev. Okay? And then what you will need to do, uh, I will just clean up to make it clear uh, like this. And I will take my Flutter file that I just downloaded and I will put it inside my Flutter Dev folder. Okay, so you can see we have the Flutter Dev. If you click on Home, you click on Flutter Dev, Flutter, and you see the Flutter, uh, the, the folder bin. This is important, you will need to remember this one. Next, you will press on Command Space and you will open a terminal like this. First thing first, if you have the version Big Sure or Catalina, you can follow the steps, you can continue the steps. But if you have an oldest version like Mojave or Hysteria, then you will need to go at 4 minute 33 of this video. So let's continue with the newest version of the Mac. You will go inside your terminal and you will write vim space the curve slash dot z s h r c and you will press enter. This will open a file. You will click on I to insert things inside this terminal. You will scroll down inside the Flutter Dev documentation until you find the update your path. You will take the step three and you will copy this one and paste it. It should look exactly like this. Good. Next, what we will need to do is remove the path to Flutter directory. So we will remove this. Make sure that you have exactly the same thing because if you have something different, it will not work. Go back inside your, your folder, go inside MacBook. Uh, it's the home folder. You click on Flutter Dev, Flutter, and you see the bin folder. So this is the path we need to give the terminal. Inside you will write dollar home. Make sure that you have exactly the same slash flutter dev. So you see the home folder, the flutter dev, flutter and bin. This is the path to the file bin. Next you will press escape, column WQ exclamation point, and then enter. And you should come back to this screen. Good, we have updated our path to the Flutter bin folder. Now you will open another terminal and you will write Flutter Doctor and you will press enter. This should load for five to 10 minutes and this is to download Flutter. So I will just fast forward and this is what you will have at the end. You see the check mark near Flutter? This means Flutter has been installed successfully. It's good. We will close the terminal and we will reopen again. And inside this one, we'll rewrite Flutter Doctor. And this time it will take maybe five to 10 seconds to load. And you will see, once again, if you go up, you have you still have the check mark near Flutter. So it's mean everything worked fine. You can close it. You have successfully installed Flutter with your Mac. Now let's talk about the oldest version of the Mac. Mojave or Hyceria. You will still have your terminal and inside your terminal, you will write vim space dot bash underscore profile. And you will press enter. Inside this one, you will press I to insert things inside. You will go back inside your documentation of Flutter. You will scroll down until you find the section update your path. And when you have this, you will take the third one. So the point number three, you will copy this and you will paste it inside the bash profile. Make sure that you have click I before to insert things. Then you will remove the path to Flutter Git directory. Uh, actually, we will remove everything. So I will delete everything and I will just keep dollar sign path column. What you need to do is you need to go in your finder. Inside your finder, you will find your bin file that I told you, you will drag and drop inside the terminal. And also make sure to add the comma at the end. So make sure to have something like this, the user, your user, Flutter Dev, Flutter and bin. 
then you will press escape semicolon uh, column w q exclamation point enter good you should come back to this pages this means the path has been updated you will close the terminal and we will reopen the terminal so i will open the terminal and inside i will write flutter doctor Here you go. I will press enter and this should load Flutter. It will download Flutter. It might take five to 10 minutes. Good. I will just fast forward and now you will see the check mark near Flutter. So this means Flutter has been successfully installed. I will close the terminal and we will reopen the terminal just to verify if it worked fine. We will write Flutter Doctor another time. And this time it will take maybe five to 10 seconds. You will go up and you will find the check mark and Flutter. So that's, that's mean Flutter is successfully installed. That is great. So we have installed Flutter on our Macintosh. In the next video, what we will do is we will install Android Studio. See you in the next video, bye. What's up universe? In this video, we will install Flutter for the Mac M1 chip. We will click on get started macOS inside flutter.dev website. Then you will find the section, get the Flutter SDK. You will press on this big blue button. And then when it, when it is done, you will go inside your finder. And in your finder, we will need to find the highest level folder of our Mac. To do so, we can go on document and you can press uh, command up. You will now be inside your uh, computer folder. So I name my computer MacBook. Then you will press again the command up. You will take your main folder, call it the name of your computer. For me, it is MacBook. And inside this one, you will create a brand new folder called Flutter Dev. Perfect. Now what we will need to do is first clean up this file and we will take the Flutter folder that we have just downloaded, so the SDK, and we will drag and drop it inside Flutter Dev. Good. So now if you go back inside your computer folder, Flutter Dev, Flutter, and you will find the bin folder. Be sure to remember this one because we will use it later. You can press command space to find the terminal and once the terminal is open, you will need to write inside vim the little wave slash dot, and it will be z s h r c, and then you will press enter. Good. Inside this one, we will press on i to insert information, and the information that we will insert will be inside the documentation. We will scroll down until we find the section update your path. And inside this one, we will take the first and we will copy it. We will paste it inside our terminal and then we will, modif we will modify a couple of things. So we will go uh, on the left and we will remove the path to flutter. And instead what we will put is what we have inside our finder. So if you remember, you have your home folder. So for me, it is MacBook. For you, it will be something else. You will remember that Flutter dev, and then you have the Flutter and the bin. So what you will need to do is write the dollar sign. So first of all, we will say dollar sign home, and then you will say slash, and you will say Flutter dev. So home, is your main folder. For me, it is MacBook. Perfect. So now we have at this export, we will say escape, semicolon, WQ, exclamation point, and enter. Good. Everything is done for this part. Next step will be to open the terminal and write Flutter Doctor. Great. Now you will press enter and Flutter will download a couple of things. This may take five to 10 minutes. When it is done, you will find if you scroll a little bit up the Flutter with the check green mark. That's mean Flutter has been successfully installed. Next, you will close this terminal and we will just need to verify if Flutter is still accessible. 
and we will write Flutter Doctor once again. This time it will be very fast and you will find Flutter on the top with the green check mark. That's good. The little last thing that we need to do with the Flutter M1 chip is you will need to go in Finder, you will need to find your applications, the utilities, you will go inside, you will right click terminal and get info. And you will need to check the open using Rosetta. So be sure that this is checked and you are good to go. You will go inside your terminal and you will write the last command called sudo gem install ffi. And this will download everything required for the CocoaPods. Perfect. So you will enter your password. This will download a couple of things that nobody really know. And now you can go on the next video to install Android Studio. By the way, this video cost over $2,000, so you have the choice. The blue pill, the red pill. Will you subscribe? In this video, we will install Android Studio for our Mac. First, we need to go on flutter.dev. And inside this website, we will scroll down until we find the Android Studio uh, section. So if you scroll, you will find it eventually, Android, set, uh, Android Setup. You will download and install Android. Good. So now we are on the website developer.android.com. We will download Android Studio. And I will say, uh, I will agree the terms and I will download it. If you have the Android version of Mac M1 chip, then you can download the M1 chip. Right now I have a Mac with the Intel chip. Good, so this has been downloaded. I will click on it and I will uh, click on the download that we just did. The download may take like five minutes, maybe. I will just fast forward things. Then you will take Android Studio and you will drag and drop inside the application folder. Good. So this is copying Android Studio in our applications. You will see it is right there. Next, I will close this window. I will close also the internet and I will double click on Android Studio. So it is opening and then we will say uh, this is from the internet, we will say open. This will open Android Studio. We can quit the folder and let's go. This one will say okay, so we will not import configuration. We will do it from scratch. So Android Studio is still loading. Next, the data sharing, I will say no. And for this page welcome, I will say next. And then you have the choice, standard or custom. I will use standard. And then I will use the dark mode. I will say next. And I will finish the installation. So this is downloading all the components for Android Studio. I will fast forward. And then this might ask you your password for your computer. I will enter my password and I will say OK. So as you can see, I have the Intel chip. But if you have the M1, uh, you should download with the M1 if you have the possibility. I will say OK. So it is currently creating and I will just say finish. Next, we need to go on configure and preferences. Inside this one, we will go on plugins and we will go in the search bar to write flutter. We need to install the Flutter plugin. We will find the first one and then I will click on install. I will accept the condition. The second pop-up was to install Dart also. So I installed Dart. And now it's asking to restart the IDE because we have installed Flutter and Dart. So I will restart it. We have successfully installed Android Studio and we have added the plugin Flutter and the plugin Dart. On the next video, we will use the emulator of Android Studio. See you in the next one.
In this video, we will use the Android Studio emulator for the first time and we will accept the Android licenses. First, you will click on create a new Flutter project. Then you will click the first one, first application, and you will say next. You will then go on the project name and call it, by example, Flutter App Testing. Now we need to have the good Flutter SDK path. If it's empty for you, then you will click on the three dots and you will go find the SDK path. It's on your home, Flutter Dev, Flutter, and you will see you have all the files inside. This is the good path. Good. Next, you have the project location. Just remember where uh, it's saved. So you click next. And you have the you have the just to click finish after, and this will create our first Flutter project. You will see the little uh, pop up right there. I will just click on fix it. If you have it, just click on fix it. Good. So now Android Studio is loading. This Android Studio is a big big program, so it takes time to load, and it's normal. Then you will click on AVD Manager. So I will click on the icon, and then you will see a pop-up will appear. If you have no device, you will need to create a new virtual device. Otherwise, you can just fast forward if you already have a device. I will click on Pixel 4, I will say Next, and then I will download the latest Android version, which is the Air version. Maybe you will have a new a newest version. That's good. Next, I will click on accept and I will say next. I will fast forward the uh, downloading and at the end, I will just click on finish. When it's ready, you will click on finish and you will say next to go on the next page. Okay, so we have the Android virtual device and we can modify things, but everything is good. We will just click on finish. So we have created a new virtual device. I will click on play because I want to open this. If you have a pop-up like this, just click OK. It's not a big deal. It will still work. Then you have the would like to access your microphone pop-up. I will just say OK. And then you see this is the emulator. It's currently loading. If your computer is not very good, it may take a lot of time. So I will just fast forward again, just to uh, don't lose too much time. Maybe you will have the this pop up. You just click on close app and it should be good also. If you have problem, just try again to relaunch the emulator. Eventually it will work. It will work. Then you will click on the play button at the top. And this will launch your first Flutter app. So this may take a lot of time. Uh, if your computer is very bad, it will be long, maybe five minutes. So I will maybe fast forward this part to also. And uh, here we go. We have our first Flutter app. It's the very basic app that Flutter give us. It's a counter app. You just press on the plus sign and it count numbers. I will just quit the emulator. So you will see a little pop-up. I will say, okay, no. And I have quit the emulator. Now what we have to do is to accept the Android, um, the Android Studio licenses. You will press on Command Space and you will open the terminal. Inside your terminal, you will write Flutter Doctor. So this should open uh, this should run something and you will see Android Studio, uh, Android, Android Toolchain, this section. And you will need to accept the Android licenses. You will copy this code and you will paste it. Flutter Doctor Android licenses. And you will press enter. So I will just make sure that no space are allowed. So make sure that it is like this. I have put this on the screen how it's supposed to be written. You will press enter. And then they will ask you multiple questions. You just press Y to say yes, and you press enter to say okay. So Y, enter, Y, enter, Y, enter. Just to accept all the licenses. And after it's done, then you will write Flutter Doctor again. 
and you will see you have the check mark near Flutter, and you will have also the green check mark just uh, near Android toolchain. That means the Android licenses has been accepted successfully. You can quit the terminal. We have launched the Android emulator for the first time. It is working fine. We have accepted the Android license also. Bye. Inside this video, I will show you how to install Visual Studio Code inside your Macintosh. First, you will go on internet and you will write Visual Studio Code or Visual Code and you will click on this link. Good. The next thing is to download it. So I will click on download for Mac. If you have the pop-up download for Mac M1, then do it. And then I will click Allo and this will download VS Code. Uh, when I say VS Code is Visual Studio Code, it's the same thing. Then I will click on VS Code. This will open a pop-up, I will say open. This is just asking if I want to open an app downloaded from the internet. I will close the internet page and now you can see we have Visual Studio open. I will close the pop-up and I will maximize the screen. I will then click on open folder and I will go find my project with Flutter. So I will go on home, which is my MacBook, Android Studio project, and I will click on Flutter app testing. Next, I will click on library and I will click on main.dart. You will see this pop up, the marketplace as extension, click on search marketplace. This will open all the extension for Visual Studio. And then inside you will write, by example, so you can just click the, the tab and you can write ext column dart and you will install dart and flutter you need to install these two extensions it's important to work with flutter next we will install something else call it the awesome flutter snippet and this will be useful to make our life easier with flutter we will then download another one and this one will be the bracket pair coralizer 2. This you click install. You will see if you go back inside your main.dart file, you see this is with the pair bracket coralizer and this is without. And this is with. You see the difference? You can have all your bracket with colors. So it's easier to understand Flutter. The next thing we will download is the material theme material icon team. So I will install this and you will see if we go back inside our files, you see we have now icons before all tab. After you will press on the play button and you will select start pixel. This will trigger the emulator. Make sure that you are inside the main.dart file to press the play button. You will Maybe have a pop-up saying Dart Dev Tools include right there. I will just click never ask again. Perfect. And if you have the Mac M1, maybe you will not be able to, to trigger the emulator. And we have a solution for this on the next video. On the next video, we will install Xcode with the simulator of Apple. So see you in the next one. In this video, I will show you how to install Xcode and how to get your simulator to run your Flutter app. First, you will need to go in the App Store and you will go inside the search bar. You will search for Xcode. And then you will press Get and Install. I will fast forward, but this will take maybe 10 minutes. Good. Next, I press on Open. I will open Xcode. I will need to say agree the terms and condition. I will enter my password, the password of my computer, and I will press OK. This is installing components. The pop-up of Xcode will open. I will close the page of the App Store. I will go back, uh, I will quit Xcode, and I will press command space. And I will open the simulator because when you download Xcode, the simulator get download at the same time. This is the simulator of Apple. And we will run our Flutter app on this emulator.
you will then press command space and open Visual Studio Code. We will run our Flutter app from Visual Studio Code into the simulator. So if you remember, uh, you see this little pop-up. Would you like to use recommended VS Code? I will say yes. Good. And uh, next, you will need to press on play, but make sure that you are on the main dot dart to see the play button. So you press on play and the application should be triggered on the emulator, on the simulator. So you see on the terminal, all the, the, the line of code, this means that is running and you can see the Flutter app has been running on the simulator. So we are done with the Flutter installation. We have installed everything required and now we are ready to start the fun part. See you in the next video. Bye. Before we start this course, I just want to tell you which extension you should have for your Flutter project. So if you are inside Visual Studio Code, you can go inside extensions and then you will find a couple of extensions that you can add or search to add them. I have the bracket pair colorizer 2, which is currently deprecated, but uh, I still use it. I don't really care. Uh, you can download another bracket pair colorizer if you want, but this one is still working. I have also the awesome flutter snippet. Oh, and just before the bracket pair colorizer 2, the goal is to see uh, the bracket. So you can see this bracket is yellow. This one is uh, pink, blue, and like this. So we can see where the bracket ends. It's easier to see it. That's the goal of the bracket pair colorizer. colorizer. So after you have the awesome Flutter snippet, this one will allow you to uh, write big chunks of code uh, faster. So you will just have to write, by example, state full W, and this will write a big chunk of code for you. Uh, I will use this in the course. You have also the better comments. This is, this is pretty cool to write some uh, comments with colors. I use this one. Um, then we have the, uh, let me once again, I go down. You should have also the material icon theme. This one is pretty cool because by example, if we go inside the Explorer, you can see that we have folders with image before everything. So if you don't have this, you will not have like a, a folder with image like this. Okay. Uh, next one. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So if you have those, I think it's four, one, two, three, and four, you should be good to go. So that's it for this one. And let's start the, the learning inside the next video. Bye. Welcome to the Flutter course. Inside this video, we will create a new Flutter project. Oops, sorry. We will create a new Flutter project. I don't know about you, but I am excited for this course. Let's start this. This section will be the most fun section because we will learn about the basics of Flutter. Let's start this by creating a new project. If you remember on the installation, we have created a Flutter project, but maybe you have already Flutter. Uh, so I just want to start from scratch inside this module. We will create a new project. You can see um, that I don't have the button create a new Flutter project. You can do it by yourself by clicking the button if you have it but my Android version have some problem and maybe it's the same for you. So I will show you how to do it with the CMD, which is the comment prompt. I will open the comment prompt. Then I will go inside my desktop. I can say CD desktop like this. And now I am inside my desktop. If you want to go inside another folder, what you can do is you can open a file explorer. I will open it. And then inside this one, you can go by example uh, on the C drive. I will go inside user, my user. Oops, sorry, this was fast. I will just start again. I will go inside C drive, my users, my user. And then I will go inside desktop right there. So if you have a file, you just take the file location. And then inside the command prompt, you will say CD and you drop the, you, you paste this. Like this. So it's the same thing. You can also use CD and two, two dot like this to go back um, a file prior. You can see. And if I do CD space and the file that I paste, I am inside the desktop again. That was just a just uh, small introduction for command prompt. 
and inside we will say flutter uh, not flutter doctor but it will be flutter create because create is uh, a function uh, inside the flutter command and we will say flutter create and the name of our app this one will be flutter um, learn learn the basics like this make sure that you don't put space like this you really need to have uh, the underscore good so we have create we will create a project flutter from the command prompt like this you should see like this the folder that has been created in the desktop you can create it wherever you want in your computer next step we will close this we will, i will close the, um, the explorer and now uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. We have created a Flutter project with the terminal. Um, yeah, you can create it with your Android Studio if you want. In the next video, I will explain you what is the difference between Android Studio and Visual Code Studio. Visual Studio Code. See you in the next one. Bye. Welcome back in this Flutter course. Okay, right now I will explain you what is the difference between Android Studio and Visual Studio Code. If you already know the difference, then you can move on. Otherwise, I will just tell you like, yes, what is the difference and what is my preferences and which one you should use. For Flutter, you can use both of them. Honestly, I think uh, Android Studio is more complete with Flutter. The thing is, Android Studio take a lot of uh, computer power, okay? That's mean if your computer is not the best computer ever, it will be very hard to run the Android Studio and run the emulator at the same time. In the other end, Visual Studio is very light. So it's very easy to run an, uh, Visual Studio inside a bad computer. And also Visual Studio have what we call extensions. So if you remember in the installation, we add these uh, plugins. So I will show you all plugins I have in case you, you want to pause and use the same plugin like this. This is the most important at the start. I will go very slowly, but I will continue to talk. So Visual Studio, in my opinion, is better because first it's very light and um, yeah, for any computer, you will be able to use this. And also they have extensions like a lot of good extensions and Android Studio don't have them, but it's your preference. If you want to, both of them, you can code with Flutter. Those are just like box where you put text to code and build something. So you can use both of them. In this course, we would most of the time use Visual Studio. Maybe we will use Android Studio sometime, but it's absolutely the same thing. It's just to build code. Good. So. What we will do in the next video, uh, we will start the emulator because we need to start the emulator of our new project and we need to maybe learn a little bit about Flutter because the name of this course is Flutter Basics. See you in the next one. Bye. Welcome back to the Flutter course. I hope you are still excited about it. Let's start right away by opening Android Studio, our new project inside this one. So I will go inside, open an an existing Android Studio project. Even though it's a Flutter project, it will still work. So I will bring this page right here and I will go and see user, my name, and then it will be desktop. So this is where I saved the project. I have this one, Flutter learn the basics. So you just click on this. You will see inside you have like Android, iOS library. So you just need to click on the name of the project. You say, okay. And this will open the project inside Android Studio. And as I told you, we will use Visual Studio. So maybe you ask, why did you open the project in Android Studio? It's because we will go on AVD Manager. You click this button. Okay. And then you press play. That's good. This is just to open the emulator. So uh, now we can close the window and we can close the Android Studio. It was just to open the emulator. That's great. Next, we will go in Explorer and I will double click on Explorer. Can I do it? Okay, that's good. I will quit extension. I will go in File. I will do the same thing, open folder. I will go in my desktop 
and I will find my Flutter Learn the Basics. Select folder. Good. So we have opened the project. I will put this on side and I have my emulator on the right. Let's make it just a little bit smaller. Good. Um, so what we will do is we will go on LIB, you click lib library, this is what I call it, and you go on main, double click on this, and you press the, the play button, which is start debugging. If you don't have the play button, you can go on run and start debugging. You have the same thing. You can press F5 if you want also. Good, so this is running. I will just fast forward until this run and just a little tip, uh, maybe it will take it, uh, five minutes to load the emulator. The emulator take a lot of uh, computer power. So if your computer is not the best one, it may take uh, a little while to open the, the, the emulator. And if you run it, it may take another five minutes to run the app. So you see the app has run because uh, uh, the computer I use have a lot of power. Good. So we have opened the Flutter project inside this video. I try to put every video like under five minutes. So what we will do in the next one, we will start to play around with Flutter. Just to understand how it works. So th this video was just to run the emulator. See you in the next one. Bye. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the course. Okay, right now we have started the, the emulator in the next video, in the previous video, sorry. And right now what we will do is, yeah, I think it will just, I will just delete everything. Let's delete from the line six to the line 16. Let's delete everything. Good. And we cannot restart right now because we have a flutter error. Let me explain what happened right there. We will start from absolute scratch. Okay, so the void main mean that when you press on the play button, do we have it again? Uh, run, um, oh, we don't have it anymore. I will just stop this. Don't stop it yourself. I will do it and I will restart the app just to show you something. You see, when we press on this, uh, start debugging. Oh, we don't have it anymore. Okay, but whatever. When we press on this, I will redo it. This start the main, the main void. So this is a function um, main that will trigger something. And then we will say run the app and run the app. What it will do, it will run what have inside the run app. And what is inside, this is not very important because every app will will start like this and you will already have it. But it's just to tell that when you press play, the play will start the main the main thing. And then you have the run app that will start your app. And this is your app. How do you create an app? You just say, by example, st, um, STL. So ST, okay, this one. So you, if you just write ST, you have stateful and stateless widget. Okay. Let's, we will just start with the basics with the stateless widget. I will explain you what is the difference later. For now, stateless widget work fine for us. And we will say my app because we need to have the same name as what will be triggered. This is our app. It's the name of our app. You can change it if you want. You can say my app too, but if you do it, you need to change it like this, like this, and that's good. I will put it back. Because you see, as soon as I do it, the test file don't work anymore because this is the name of the app for the test file. We should have two also to work. I will put it back at my app only like this, my app, my app, my app. That's great. Next, um, we will go right away with what is important with Flutter, okay? You have the return. So you have the stateless widget that will build something and will return something. The first thing you need to know with Flutter is you need the main widget. Let's start about the main one is the material app, like this, material app. Here we go. This is the first thing we need to do. Inside the material app, we have what is called the home. I will go straight away because we, we try to do it under five minutes and I will explain you everything right after. We have the home and we have the scaffold inside. 
and only like this we can start an app. I will restart my app and I will explain you while it's running what everything means. So Flutter is widget inside widget inside widget inside widget. It's like a flow of widget. And a widget start with a capital letter most of the time. Okay. And um, every widget have inside what we call arguments. And home is an argument. So if I press enter and I press command, uh, if I press control space, I think on Mac is command space, you will have all the suggestion. This is all the suggestion for actual arguments that can be inside the material app widget. Okay, I, I will I will make more focus on this in the next video because it's super important that you understand. But for now, what we have created with the material app and the scaffold, this has created a white page. And the scaffold is the skeleton of the app. This is what we have on this video. We will go straight away on the next video and I will show you what arguments you can put inside the scaffold to create an application. So see you on the next video. Bye. In this video, we will learn a little bit more about the scaffold widget and the material widget. These two are the most important widget to build an app. These two are the skeleton of an application. Okay, the material app is a little bit more complex, so we will talk about it a little bit a little bit later inside this course. But the scaffold widget is like one of the most important one. Okay, this is the skeleton of an application. And you can see this is like the, the scaffold is the white screen right now. And we will build up, uh, from this. Now, let's think about what is an application. Usually we have a bar on the top where we have a title, we have things inside the middle, and we have a bar at the bottom also to change pages. This is a typical application. So to do this, we need to go inside the scaffold and add some code, okay? The thing is you need to remember with Flutter, this is super, super important, okay? Flutter work with widgets. It's widget over widget over widget, okay? This is the most important thing you need to understand. The second most important thing you need to understand is every widget have what we call inside arguments. I have told you this previous video. And when you use an argument, let's say any, any of these argument, you need to add another widget inside. That's it. So you put a widget, which, call, which, which start with a capital letter. You put a widget, you put an argument from this widget, and then you start again. You put another widget with a capital letter, and you continue like this, and it's over widget, over widget, over widget. That will build an application. So remember, a widget start with a capital letter, an argument start with a, a lowercase letter. Okay, good? First, let's start with the a bar, the first bar on the top. So if I click control space to find all the arguments, you see one of these is app bar. So the app bar is what is on the top. And next, if you go over, if you go uh, by example, try to find a widget, widget start with a capital letter, important. We will say app bar, let's say this. Oh, we have one widget, call it app bar. We will select the one with the the comma. Uh, is it comma? The parenthesis, the bracket, sorry. So we will select the one with the bracket. I click on it. And if I just press the hot reload, you see, boom, we have an app bar. Easy as this. We have just added an app bar argument and the app bar widget. And this have created the app bar. And you can see that app bar start with a capital letter because it's a widget and you have the bracket after to, to tell Flutter that this is what we want. And even inside this app bar, we can add more stuff. By example, what could we add? Let's find all the arguments. So you will find one, call it title. Is it perfect? Yes, let's find title. 
And now you can see, by example, if you go over title, you see this take another widget inside. So super important that you understand that Flutter is widget over widget. Every widget have arguments inside. And when you have an argument, you need to put another widget. Okay, so we need a widget. What is the title? Title is a text, I will say. So let's find a widget, call it text. Widget start with a capital letter. Remember, we have one, it's called text. So if I click text, I have one with the bracket. If you don't have it, it's not a big deal because you can add yourself the bracket, which is good. And then if we go over the widget, you can see that this, uh, by example, if I press control space inside text, nothing really happen. No arguments are available. So that's mean we go over widget and we see text, okay, text, Take inside, the first thing is a string data. So we take a string. What is a string is just plain text. So what we will do is we will use the comma like this and we will say, by example, uh, app title, this is string. And I will utter it all again with the, the light ball, the light. And you see app title, we have the title of the app. So that was it for this video. What we have created is we have created a nav bar with the title and we have learned about widget and arguments. This is the most important thing you need to remember. Widget start with the capital letter, argument with the lowercase letter. That's it for this one. See you in the next video and bye. Welcome back. Inside this video, we will remove the debug banner right there on the corner because it's disgusting okay how uh, f first i just want to mention something that i forget in the previous video maybe you ask yourself how did you know that the a bar is what is on the top it's a good question so let's say i remove it you don't have to do it i will just explain if you go over a bar and magically you click on this little arrow so you can you can use your keyboard to switch which place you are. And if you click on the arrow and I go down, you'll see you have a little description. It's an app bar to display at the top of the scaffold. <laughs> That's perfect. You have the description and you have the description for every place. So this one will be the primary content of the scaffold. Okay, what is the primary content of the scaffold? We will find out in next video. But for now, let's try to remove the debug banner. Okay, that's a good question, but how do we do it? Let's find out. So I will go on, uh, this is how I will usually find a way to remove stuff, okay? By example, if you want to remove the debug banner, what sh can you do? You can say flutter, debug uh, so what is how is it called it, it, it's called debug so you don't know it's a banner you will say flutter debug then you have the first suggestion banner okay seems good how can i remove this sorry maybe i was fast i just click on the first one stack overflow and then if you scroll down you will find the debug banner will also automatically be removed on release build that's cool but you can see a lot of answer from this message saying that material app debug show chicken mode banner false. Perfect. Let's do this. I'll put this back. So material app, if you go inside, you have all the arguments. If you press control space and what it was, it was banner debug show chicken mode banner. And then you need to put this as false like this. And if I out reload, oops. <laughs> I will just copy this. I will control Z to put it back the app bar. That's good. And I will put back the debug show check and mode banner. And now we don't have it anymore. So this is how you find solution inside your Flutter app. You need to create something. You don't know how you will find, you will go on the internet and you will try to find it by yourself. So I could have just tell you that it was a debug check and mode banner, but I just, 
want to be sure that at the end of this course, you are able to do everything by yourself. So to create an app. So on the next video, what we will do is we will try to put content inside the middle of this app. So see you on the next video. Bye. Welcome back in the Flutter course. Inside this video, we will learn how to put content inside the middle of our app. Let's do this. First thing first, we have the scaffold, which is a widget, the app bar, that is this section, and we have something called the body. And if you go in the description, it's the primary content of the scaffold. This is how I know it's this information. Inside the body, what the body take is a widget. Perfect. So we will put a widget inside. Which widget do, you, do we know? We know the text widget. So maybe we could just say text and use the text widget. Inside, what, if you remember what is inside the text widget is a string. If you go over, you see the text take the first thing as a string. So we will put a string. You put the comma to show a string and we will say body because this is the body. We will auto reload. And now you see we have a body. That's cool. We have information in the center of the app. It's not in the center center, but it's inside what we call this section. You see the mouse, this section is the body. But automatically Flutter will place the information at the top left corner. Okay, that's good. What else can we do inside this um, video? We have created this, the body, um, I think, I think we will keep it like this because this, this video will be very short. It will be just about the body. That's good. In the next video, we will keep learning a little bit more about how to structure a Flutter app inside the scaffold. See you in the next one. Bye. In this video, I will show you how to add the bottom bar right there. Okay. Let's do this right now. Be ready. I think this is a little bit longer uh, than usual. Let's try this. First, you need to go inside the scaffold. Inside the scaffold, we have the app bar that we have the app bar widget finish, finishing with the comma. We have the body argument that give the text, which is a widget finishing with the comma also. And you need to put another argument. So you need to be sure to separate every argument linked with widget separate with a comma. We will go inside this and we have the second one call it bottom navigation bar. Seems great. A bottom navigation bar to display at the bottom of the scaffold. That is magnificent. If we go over this, we can see that this required a bottom navigation bar with the capital letter because it's a widget and we will take this one bottom navigation bar. That's great. If I put the hot reload, nothing happened. Okay. This is why, because uh, why maybe? Because if we go inside, you can see that uh, we have nothing inside the bottom up bar. So we have in the bottom up bar, a key, color, elevation, shape, clip, margin, child. Okay. Uh, sorry, I don't think I have used a good one. Yeah, it's bottom navigation bar and I used the bottom app bar. Sorry about that. Bottom navigation bar. That's great. Now we have an error saying the name parameter items is required. Good. If you want to know the error, you just go over the thing and you will see the error. So we need item. If we go inside bottom navigation bar, we press control space, we have all the arguments. The first one is the items. That's wonderful. We take this one. And now if we refresh, you see, oh, we have some error. Failed assertion line, blah, blah, blah. Items.lens need to be bigger than two. So that's mean we need more than two items inside our item list. That's great. I will quit this and I will just continue the app because now we have a bug. So we have the red screen. How to solve this? We need items inside the items. You can see the same error right there. Items.length is bigger or equal at, at two. So we go over items and we see that this take a list 
of bottom navigation bar items. I will copy this one. I will go inside and this is a list. Okay, a list in Flutter is called by using square brackets. Easy as this. I will go inside and I will paste the widget that we, we need. Because as you can see, it take a list of bottom navigation bar item, which this is also a widget because it starts with a capital letter. Bottom navigation bar item, and this need to use the bracket. Perfect. I will put, uh, we see we have another error. The, num the name par parameter icons is required. That's good. We need, we need icon. Let's say icon. And what does icon take? If we go over, we can see that icon is a widget. That's great. Do we have a widget called icon? Hmm, that's a good question. Let's find out. Icon. And we have one. That's magnificent. Let's click on this one. And what does icon take inside? Icon take inside an icon data. Okay, good. This one is a little bit more tricky, but I can tell you that an icon data, if I, if I press icons with the S, you see that icons is supposed to be an icon data. Where can we see this? Um, I don't think they show it, but it's just because I know it. So I tell you right now, icon, take icons dot something. I will say home. Great. Now we don't have error anymore, but we need two of them. We need two items inside the bottom navigation bar. So you see, this is a little bit more complex. Right now we, you have some challenge and you cannot just put the second like this because you see, if we go over const literal as parameter, blah, blah, this expect to find the comma. We need to separate both of them with the comma. We need to separate items inside the list with comma. If I out reload, we have another error. I will play and we will see the error right there is item.label is not equal to null. So we need to have something in the label. Where's the label? Let's go inside bottom navigation bar item. I will press control space or command space and we have label. That's great. If we go over label, you see this take a string. We know how to put a string. It's with the comma. And you say, by example, home, because we use the home icon. We will copy this item, this label, sorry, and we will paste it for the second navigation bar item also. And now we can, uh, we will change this one for something else, maybe settings. And we will change the icon for settings is, yeah, we have it. That's perfect. I will save uh, on the next one. I think I will explain a little bit more about icon. Um, it's just because it happened that we absolutely need it. So I will use it. And now when you out reload, you see, we have the, uh, two button. That's great. We have something at least, but now you can see the little, uh, blue line everywhere. We will solve this in the next video. So see you on the next one. Bye. Hello. Hello. Inside this one, I will just show you how to remove the blue line. So if we go over any of these, it will say prefer const with constant. Okay. That's mean you need to put const to put this as a constant. So I will copy this and I will paste it before everything. Now you see this one take the same thing. So we can put it before bottom navigation bar, but nothing will happen. That's mean we need to put it before the list because the list will be the constant. So this is a constant. It will never change. And just like this, you have removed the blue line. That's it for this one. In the next video, I will just explain a little bit more about the icon. How did I know that we need to put icons with the S dot home? Like, how did I know that? See you in the next one. Bye. Welcome back. Okay. So I told you that I will show you how did I learn about icon. So let's do this right now. I will open another browser, google.com. Here you go. And then what will be, uh, by example, how did I know this? I will say flutter, 
uh, icon and just like this let's search about it icon class we will go on the first link will it work not sure but let's find out um yeah if you go down you will find some documentation and you can see children cons widget icon and you see the first thing is icons dot favorite then you can put other things inside like color argument you can have the size argument semantic label but this is how I knew it. You just need to make a little Google search and you will find it right away. So you can see also Flutter how to use icon. And this is what I want to show you inside this course. I want to show you how you can solve your problem by yourself because you don't want to be stuck when you try to build an app. Let's go on this one. I think it's the same. Yeah, it's the same. So let's find another one, maybe medium.com is pretty good also. If we scroll down, you will maybe find somewhere the code. Uh, please just give it, give us the code. Yeah, icon. What is this? I don't know. This person is maybe uh, somewhere else. Okay, so whatever. I think we have something great. How to use custom, no, not custom icons. Yeah, this, this one was good. We have it. So I will just copy this one. Boom, copy this, please. And thank you. So you can just go inside your icon where it is right there. Boom, you paste it. That's it. You just copy and paste code. And now if we auto reload, you will see it's a hearth because I think it's the favorite icon. Yep. And you have the color pink and you have the size and semantic label. So I will remove um yeah i think i will remove all of these but you see this is how you find stuff how to build stuff with flutter you just make some search on google and that's it i will change this one for something else like dot home i will put it back and that's how i knew that you need to put icons.com see you on the next video bye in this video i will show you how to use the format document i'm sure you wonder like how sometimes I just like move columns like this and structure the document easy as this. Okay, I use a command on my keyboard. It's um, called format document shift alt F, okay? And you can use it only when you put, by example, a comma between two uh, bracket. And now I can use it it's a shift alt F. If you want to find it on Mac, you will find somewhere something called format document with the command near. So you can see if I remove the comma on this and I do it again, this bracket should go right after like this. Boom. You see it go right after. It's just to structure document and see it better. So when you see two bracket without comma, try to put a comma between and format document. When I, when you see that, like my code moving, it's because I use format document. Where else can we use it? Let's say like at the end, we have multiple bracket. If I remove them all and I do format document, you see all the bracket go collide together. So that's why I usually put a comma at the end of every bracket. So that's pretty much it for the format document. If you see me moving code like crazy, uh, like like this, I'm, it's just because I use the keyboard shortcut called format document. That's it for this one. See you tomorrow. Uh, see you on the next video. Uh, that's it. Bye. In this video, you will learn how to put the body in the center. That's very easy. It will be a short video. Let's find the body. It is right there. We have the text. What you can do is you can right click, you can say uh, refactor, and then inside you will have wrap with center. Easy as this. Boom. So what uh, this create? It create a center widget, which inside you have the child and you have the text inside. So the center is the widget because it's a capital letter. Inside you have the child, which is an argument. And usually when you have an argument called child, 
is just to put something else inside the widget. And this something else is the text widget. Uh, now we have the blue bar. It's because we need to put a cons before. And you see we, ha we still have the blue bar because we need to avoid two times the, con the const. That's good. Now you see we have two, uh, two bracket, put the comma, uh, yeah, put the comma and then here we go. We have the uh, format document, we will out reload and we have the body in the center. That's it for this one, see you in the next video. In this video, I will talk about the refactor. So we just did it in the previous video but I want to redo it because I, I want to create a video about it only. In this, in this way, you will be able to find the refactor video easily when you come back if, if you need to find it again. So uh, what we did, we used the refactor to create a, a center widget. So this have wrapped the text widget with the center. If you click on it, you can do something else cool called refactor and you can say, remove this widget. Boom, Flutter will handle everything for you and it will remove the center widget. You just need to put back the const and you can out reload. This will put back the text at the top left corner. Let's do it again. Try it by yourself first, pause this video and try to refactor the text widget with the center widget. I will do it with you right now because you should have pause. Refactor, you just right click, you say refactor or control shift air, and then you wrap with the center. But I will use something different this time. I will say wrap with a widget. So this means you can wrap with anything. And then obviously we will use the widget, call it center. That's it. So it's the same thing that we have done, but by using the wrap with a widget. So this is what we call the refactor. I will put my comma between two parentheses, uh, bracket, and I will format document. I will make sure to put my cons before the center, and that's it. So this video was about the refactor, and now you have it inside your library, and you can find the video easily. That's it for this one. See you in the next video. Bye. In this video, you will learn how to create a Flutter button. Let's start this right now. We will replace inside the center widget, which have the child argument. We will replace the text for a button. Let's do this. First, I will write with the capital letter button. And you have multiple choice, okay? You will need to remember that for buttons, there is three type of button within Flutter. The text button, the outline and button, and the elevated button. Easy as this. this. These are the three main buttons with Flutter, okay? So we will use the most common, call it the elevated, elevated button, like this. That's good. Next, we need the onPress. If I go on onPress, this say it need a function. To create an empty function with nothing inside, you just use the bracket, and the curly bracket, just like this. Oh, and you can see invalid constant. That means we need to remove the const before the center. That's it. And next we need a child. If you remember, a child is only what will be inside the first widget. We have the elevated button, and then we have the child, and the child argument means which widget, you can see right there, which widget will be inside the elevated button. So we will use a widget called, that we have already used, the text widget. I will put my, my bracket, I will add this, and I will put maybe a click, like this, simple. Now, if you press Control S, this will trigger the hot reload. Actually, yeah, it will trigger the hot reload, it will save an hot reload. So you don't need to click this every time, just save. Now, when we click on it, nothing happened, but we have a button and we still have the blue thing. So I will remove this by saying const. And you can see that the code is very long within the same line. This is probably because we have two brackets like this. I will format document 
So you can see format document. You already know about this. And that's it. We have created a flutter button. In the next video, we will learn how to trigger something inside a function. That's it for this one. See you in the next one. Bye. In this video, you will learn how to use the flutter print. Let's start this right now. Okay, so you have your application, you have your button, and this is the empty function. Good. Uh, after this, you have, uh, if you look down, you have the terminal, the problems, output, and debug console. If you don't see the terminal, let's say I, I quit it, I close this. You can open it again by saying terminal, new terminal. That's it. And now you see I have two open. I will kill the second one. Good. We have the box open and now we will go inside. Uh, we don't need it right now, but we will need it after. So to use the print uh, function inside Flutter, you go inside the unpress. The second, the inside the curly bracket, you say print with the lowercase letter. You put the semicolon and you just with, watch why you have an error. It say, oops, it say avoid print call in production code. Okay, that's good. Uh, print a string representation. Okay, so a string, we know how to use string. It's like this and we say, by example, print something. Good, just to see if the, the empty function or the unpressed function work. We will out reload and now I will click on click. And you see, if we go inside the debug console, you have the print something. Let's try again. I will click the clear console. Nothing is inside. And now when I click on click, here we go. We have the print something. That's mean when we press on the button, this trigger the elevated button on press and this print something inside the debug console. So that's cool. Uh, on the next video, we will try to print, uh, to do something else inside the on press function. But for now, we have print something, which is cool. See you on the next video. Bye. In this video, I will show you how to create a variable. Okay, maybe you wonder why we will create a variable because inside you, you see the button, elevated button from Flutter, you have the click. In the next video, what we will do is when we press on this button, we want to change the text inside. First, we need to create a variable for our text. I will cut click with the quotation mark and I will go, by example, uh, I will go just right there and I will create a string variable, call it by example, uh, button name is equal to click. Now we have an error saying, okay, expected to find the um, semicolon. So we put semicolon and it's good. I will format document. And now we have another error. If we go over my app, we can see that try making all of the field final or removing the keyword const. Oops, I will go over again. Remove the const. Okay. So if we remove the const, here we go. Now we have another error right there. The constructor being called isn't a const. Well, so that's perfect. Let's remove this one also. Seems good. Now, if we go down, we are missing the text. And the text is named, oops, I will change this. You will name usually your variable like uh, lowercase letter and capital letter for each words after. So we will copy this bottom name and we will paste it inside text. That's good. If we go over, we still have another error saying evaluation of this constant expression through an exception. And this is because the text is no more a constant because the bottom name can change. It's, it's a variable. So now we are good, but you can see that in the test file, we have an error. If we go inside, we can see that my app with the const, it's not, it's no more a constant. So I will remove this one also. Now we can ut reload. And when we ut reload, you see we have an error. And this is because we changed inside the my app, we changed the value const. And when we have like error like this, we just need to restart everything like this. I just restart instead. And now it worked fine. So nothing have changed in, inside this one, but we have created a variable called it bottom name. And in the next video, what we will do, 
is we will change the value of the button click for something else with the variable. So we will change the name of the variable. That's it for this video. See you in the next one. Bye. Are you ready to change the value of the text when we click on the button? And this is what we will do inside this one. Let's start right now. First thing first, we have the button, elevated button. We have the unpress, which trigger a function. And inside when we press on it, you see it's called the print something. We will replace this. And what we will try to do is change the value of the bottom name. To change the value, you can say bottom name like this, and you will say this is equal to something else. And because the bottom name is a string, it needs to be equal to a string. It cannot be equal to a number after that. You need to stay the same uh, type. So we will say uh, click it by example, maybe. Click it, I think it's good. And if you remember, we need to put the uh, semicolon. If you are not sure about it, you just go over, expect to find semicolon. That's good. Uh, now I will hot reload. And if we click on this, I, normally it's supposed to work, but it does not work. Why? Because in, in Flutter, you see the stateless widget and the state fold widget uh, are very different. The stateless widget mean the screen will never change. But if we use the state full widget, that's mean that if the user do something on the screen and the screen change, by example, the, the name of the button change, we need to use the state full widget. I will go over stateless widget. I will right click and say refactor. We already know about this. And I will say convert to state full widget. Okay, that seems good. Next, uh, it should work. So I will just hot reload again. And now you see we have some errors, okay? And maybe you, uh, okay, I will just go inside the run and debug. I'm not sure if I show, I show it, this to you. If you hot reload, maybe you have this error like this, okay? Popping up from the framework that dart. I will quit this. You can click on, on play debug and remove the uncut exception. I don't, personally, I don't like that. I will go back inside my file and now if you hot reload, you don't have the error anymore, but we still have it in the terminal, the debug console. I will restart the app this time. And you see, we still have an error. What is the problem is type my app is not a substream of type stateless widget and type cast. Okay, so what does this mean is we have my app, which is a stateful widget and uh, I will I will restart again just to be sure. <laughs> okay, and you see now it works. Sometimes you restart and it will not work, and the second time it works. It happens sometimes. Now everything is fine, good. But when we press on this, nothing ha nothing change still. So we have a problem. We see that the bottom name change for something else, for clicked, but we don't see the difference on the screen. This is because we need to tell Flutter, okay, we are inside the stateful widget. It's possible that the screen change, but we need to tell Flutter the screen will change. And to do that, we go on unpress function and we will use something called the set state. You can click on this and this will let know Flutter that the screen will change. And what are the information that change on the screen? We take it and we put it inside the set state. I will format document. So you see the bottom name will change and we let know Flutter that the screen will refresh with the new information. Now, if we hot reload, you see it automatically go to click it. This means the hot reload is just refreshing the screen. And that's why, because we already click it on the button previously. I will restart now, okay? Let's make it simple. I restart, we have the click. When we press on this, it changed for click head. That's good. So everything work. And this was because we needed to add the stateful widget, the set state, and that's pretty much it. And change the bottom name variable. So in this video, we have learned about stateless widget and stateful widget. 
the, the first one, stateless widget, the screen will never change. Stateful widget, the screen will change. And to let no flutter that the screen will change, we need to use set state. So that's it for this video and see you on the next one. Bye. Okay, I hope you are still excited about this course. I hope you are excited to learn about Flutter and create mobile apps. Because I am excited to create this course. First, uh, inside this video, what we will do is we will play with the bottom navigation bar. Okay, you can see right now when we press on icons, nothing happened. And we need to change this. So we have learned how to use function previously. We have learned also how to set state, how to use the stateful widget, stateless widget. And we will try to change the bottom navigation bar. Let me show you how it works. You will go inside the bottom navigation bar. We have the items. Okay, we have the bottom navigation bar, the items, which is a list of constant. And this end with the comma at the end. And after the comma, you can press control space. If you still, and just to be sure that you understand, if you don't put the comma and you press control space, it still work, but you will have an error because you need the comma, okay? So I will put the comma back and I will say control space. We need to find something to change the color or change the value. So if we go background color, current index, what is this? The index into items for the current active bottom navigation bar item. So the current active, that's perfect. Let's use current index. Let's say we use one instead. And now I will just uh, uh, out reload. Boom, you see? The icon is the next one. And if we use zero and we out reload, it should be the first one. I will out reload again, just to be sure. You see, it does not work. So what happened? we might have a problem. So when we, when you change things so fast, sometimes the, uh, the visual code don't understand that you have changed it. So I will put, I will put, uh, I will delete and then I will rewrite zero and oops, I will rewrite zero and I will out reload. So you see now the program understand you change it. Good. So you have understand that if we start at zero, it work for the first one at one is the second thing. If we put two, by example, what happened? Um, is it the same problem? So instead of redoing, I will just cl click on restart. And you see nothing, ha nothing happened. Okay, that's weird because the second item is none of, none of these. So it's mean this doesn't show error, which is good. But we will work with the zero and the one. The goal is to change the index when we press on it. Let's find another argument inside the bottom navigation bar. So you see, we, we are still inside the bottom navigation bar. Let's find another item, uh, another argument, sorry. And let's say we have the untap when we tap on it. And that's pretty much it. So we will find the untap and I will click on it. I will create an empty function. And now you see, we have a problem with the empty function. Let's go on over untap. Function int. Okay, so the function return us a int variable. That's mean inside, right there, Flutter will return us something. It's an int, and the int, we will call it, by example, the index. You see, we don't have an error anymore because the untap will return us which index we have clicked on. And now I will go inside the function, and I will say, by example, um, yeah, first, first thing first, we will need to have a variable index. Let's do the same thing we did with a uh, bottom name. I admit, but this time the index is an int, which mean a uh, uh, number, okay? Int is a number, but uh, like one, two, three, four, five, like this. If you have a number like 1.2, this is called a double, okay? but you will understand with time. So let's use int and I will say um, current index. This is equal to zero when we start. And we have a little problem. Int, try changing the name of an existing class. So int is used 
like this, if I remember. Yeah, it's not a capital letter like string. It's a lowercase letter. Perfect, we have the current index that we will use instead of the current index zero, we will paste this. And when we tap, we need to change the current index. But if you remember, if you want to refresh the screen, you need to use the set state to let no flutter that you want to refresh the screen. And then you can say current index is equal to this index, because when we tap on it, Flutter will return us an index on which we have tapped. And I will say index. And oops, yeah, I will put my semicolon at the end, because if you go over, you will see, expect, expect to find a semicolon. I will format document. I will auto reload everything. And now when we press on the icon, the page change or the icon change in consequence. It's already have been more than five minutes. So we will finish this video like this and see you on the next one. Bye. In this video, I will show you how to add another button under the first one. Okay, it seems simple right now because you just want to add another button. We can go on the button and where it is, elevated button, I will copy this. It seems simple, but where do you put it? Because in the center, we have a child and the child only take one thing. If you try to put it after, it don't work. We have an error because it's not a list of child. How do we create a list of child? First, you need to know, do you want to put the button uh, on the vertical or on the horizontal? Let's start by doing vertical. To put, to put multiple things on vertical, we need to use a widget, call it the column. Okay, so let's use a widget, call it column. We can create the widget like this. So you can just watch, you don't need to do it right now. You can say column and then you open the bracket. Oops, column, you open the bracket and then you put the children inside and inside you will put the elevated button. Okay, this is one way to do it. And children is the same thing as child, but it's mean it will be a list of child. Good. There is a, a way of doing it even simpler. I will go back. And do you remember when we do refactor, you click on elevated button, refactor, wrap with column. That's it. This flutter will automatically put the children, the list, and will put the widget inside the list. And now you can add the other button just under. I will format document. And if we auto reload, here we go. We have a list of two buttons. We have two buttons, one over the other. And because we still are under five minutes, I'm gonna show you something with the column. You see right now, the column is not in the middle. That's not very cool. So how do we put the, the two widgets inside the middle? I will go on column and I will go inside the arguments. I will press control space. And now you have the main axis alignment and we will press on this one. Let's go over main axis alignment. This doesn't take only a widget, but it take a main axis alignment widget. So we'll copy this one. We will paste it. And now we will replace start by another thing. So we'll say dot and we'll use center by example. Let's out reload. Boom, magic. So the main axis alignment, so the column is vertical. Main axis alignment means the main axis of the column, like this. So this will be the position in the center instead of the start. If, if we put the end, it should go at the bottom, like this. Perfect. And now uh, I want to show you another one. Because we have the main axis, maybe we have the other axis. What will it be called? Let's go in the, in the arguments. We have something called the cross axis alignment. If we go over, you see that this take a cross axis alignment, that's center. So I paste this and instead of center, I will use something else. I will use, we have three choice and oh, we have four choice, five. Okay, let's use instead the start. And if I save, oh, nothing happened. So if I auto reload, nothing happened. If I Restart, nothing happened 
also. Okay? If we put end, what happened? I think nothing will happen also. Okay, this is because the column, the maximum size of the column is, uh, it's hard to, to draw, but this is the column right now, okay? This is the column, and it is currently at the end because the size of the column is only like this. We will need to make sure that the column take all the screen width, okay? And I think I will show you how to do this in the next video, okay? In the next video, we will make sure that the column take all the width possible, and in this case, the cross axis alignment dot end will make sure that the button go at the end. See you in the next video. Bye. Welcome back. Inside this video, we will make sure that our two buttons go at the end as we try to do with the cross axis alignment dot end. Okay, we will try to do this. For this, we will use a widget called the sized box. So we need to wrap the column widget with a widget called sized box. Try to do it by yourself and pause. Otherwise, we will do it together right now. If you remember, we can right click and refactor. Oops, sorry. I'll do it slowly. You can right click, okay, and refactor, and you have all the widget. You see, we have one wrap with sized box. If the widget name is not uh, right there, you can use wrap with a widget and use the widget name after. So we'll click on sized box. Simple as that. If I hot reload, you will see nothing change. This is because the sized box need to have a size. So we will go inside and we will use an argument called, well, I will press control space. You see we have the height, the key and the width. So the width seems perfect for us. If we give the width, by example, I don't know, 200 and we hot reload. Oh, do you see how this change. So let's put the width at 400 this time. This means all the width of the size at box is at 400 right now. So at the end, it will be, it will go at the end. But what happened if you put like 500 or if you put like seven on seven, nine, 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 nothing happened, but sometime some error can occur. And Maybe the user will have a screen with, I don't know, 1000 of width. So how do you know what is the maximum width? How could you be able to just say, go to the max width? Yes, you can. And we will do it in the next video. This is what I will show you. See you in the next one. Bye. This video will be super fast because we will learn how to use the max width inside the size at box. And it's very simple. First, you will use double. I don't know if you remember, but I said in the course that you can use int for uh, the for numbers like zero, one, two, so big, big numbers. But if you want numbers with the dot, like 2.3 or 2.4, you need to use something called double, okay? So we will use first double, and then we will say dot, and we have multiple choice. The, the one we search is infinity. And just by saying double.infinity, this will make sure to take uh, as much width as possible inside the app. So just like this, it will do it. And what we will do also is the cross axis alignment, uh, we will put it at center again. We will put the main axis alignment, oh, sorry, we will put it at start. Okay, start, and we will put the main axis alignment at center. So if we do this, it should be, uh, okay, I will hot reload, sorry. Yeah, exactly, it's right there because the width is all the screen. Now we can use the cross axis alignment and the main axis, so the column is like this. The main axis alignment follow the column. The cross axis alignment go the, the other way of the column, okay? So main axis alignment is in the center. That's perfect. Cross axis alignment is at start. That's why the two widgets are in this location. So that's it for this one. We have learned to use the double that infinity and that's mean take as much place as possible. 
See you in the next video. Bye. In this video, we will learn the row widget. Last uh, couple of video, we learned about the column widget. And this time we will learn about the row widget. It's the same thing, but instead of uh, being vertical, it is horizontal. Let's do it right now by changing column with row. Simple as that. I will hot reload. And now you see it is vertical one button after the other. Cool. And uh, what happened is both of them are in the center. And you can see the main axis alignment, because the row is horizontal like this, and the main axis alignment of the row is like this. And you can see it, it is on the center, which is perfect. Okay. But the cross axis alignment is said to be, uh, is set to be at start. So the cross axis alignment will be like this and it should be on the top, but it, it is not. Why? Because right now we use the center widget, which put the sized box and the row at the center. Okay. But the sized box don't have a certain height. So if we do, if we give a certain height and we use the same logic, double dot infinity, and we hot reload, boom, you see the row is now at start because the sized box now take all the remaining place before it was taking only the width place. So let's put it back. And um, yeah, I think it's pretty much it. If we, oops, <laughs> my voice cracked. Uh, if we remove the, uh, the first main and I hot reload, you see it is at the start. So everything seems fine. I will remove this one also and I save, boom, it's go in the center uh, left. Why? Let's find out. If we go over row, you see the main axis alignment is at, it is set at start if we do nothing and the cross axis al alignment is set as center. So that is why it is like this if we put nothing inside. So let's put both of them and let's put them at center and I will format document. That's magnificent. We have learned about the row widget and in the next video, we will continue to learn the Flutter basics. See you in the next video. Bye. In this video, I want to show you how to edit the style of a button. Let's start this. Inside the elevated button, we can add other arguments. If I press control space, we have multiple arguments. We have one called style. That's awesome. Next, what you need to do is if you go over style, it need a button style. Okay, this is not easy, but I will show you the answer and you will just have like to uh, remember this section. If you take a style, the style is very easy to, to say, okay? You recall the name of the widget and then you say dot and you say style from. Easy as that, okay? This is how you put a style. It was not easy because if you go over, it say button style, which doesn't mean that much, but you just have to say evaded button dot style from. Good. Next, inside this, we have multiple things. One of them should be like color. Oh, and we don't. So let's find what could be the color. If we go down, we will see on primary. And we see this is a color variable. If we click on it, it's a color. So that's perfect. Let's use on primary. How do we use on primary? So we need to put a color. Okay, good. Uh, let's do this. How to use a color? We will say color. And if you put a S dot, boom, you have all possible colors. Okay, easy as this. And we will put maybe the red color. I will control S. And if you hot reload, oh, you see, the on primary mean the color of the text. Let's find something else. We have the primary this time. And if we say colors dot orange, okay, maybe I was a little bit fast on this one. You use the primary argument. You say colors dot orange. Good. And now I will save. Boom, the button is orange. 
So the primary is the color of the button and the on primary is the, is the color of the text. Let's put this one as white, maybe. It look better. Good. So we have learned how to edit the style of a button. You have multiple more arguments that you can use to change the size, the anything of inside the, the button. But there is so much to learn with Flutter that I just want to show you the basics inside this section of the course. Good. So in this video, it was very fast. We just learned how to change a style of um, a button. That's it for this one and see you on the next video. Bye. Hello, 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 hello. Welcome back to the course. Uh, I hope you are still enjoying the course and you want to learn more about Flutter. This is all the basics with Flutter. Okay, so in this one, we will talk about the container widget. Ready? We will change the size at box for what we call the container. Good? The container and the size at box is very similar, but the container have a little bit more arguments. Okay? So you see, if we keep it like this, Flutter is telling us size at box for white space. So he, uh, Flutter tell us it will be better in this case to put the size at box. But if we use in, uh, the color, Okay, the color arguments. Do you remember how to use colors? You use the capital letter, you say colors with the S dot, and you put the color you will want to have. Let's say we use red. And if I save, which when I when I save it's control S, it's the same thing as a reload. Boom, you see the color red behind? This is the container. All the red space is the container. And now let's remove the height and save. This is the container. This is how Flutter uh, understand the container. And if we remove the width, you will see this will be, oh, this is still the container. So I will uh, reload. I will also restart the app just to be sure. Okay, so you see the container, even though we don't put the width, Flutter understand that the, um, the width of the container is all the space. This is because we use the row inside. If we change this for the column, okay, this means Flutter will put the red thing in the vertical this time. Exactly. Okay, so I will put back the row like it was. Now you have learned, I will put back also the width and the height, and now you have learned about uh, the container widget. You can do more with the container. By example, you can put some decoration if you want to have like border, uh, rounded border corner, but this is a little bit more advanced. Right now, I just want to show you the basics with Flutter, okay? So that's it for this video, and I see you in the next one. Bye. Hello, hello. Inside this video, what we will do is we will learn about conditions. What does this mean? Right now, you see when we are on home or when we are on setting, both give us the same page. But can we put a condition saying, if we are on home, then display maybe a white screen, but and if we are on settings, then display this screen? How will you do it? If, you can try if you think you can find the way to do it. Otherwise, I will show you right now how to do this. There is a multiple way of doing it, but we will try to find the most easiest way to do it. Let's try. First thing first. You see, we have the row, okay? Uh, I will go a little bit up. We have the body. The body have a center and the center have a container. What we can do is we can say, if I go before, I will say, do you remember what um, drive, which one we use? It is a variable called current index. Good, so we will go just before container, we will put the current index. So if we, and now it's where we will put the condition. If the current index equal equal to zero. If it's the case, then put container. Okay, this is what it means. Current index equals zero, and you need to put two equal. If you put only one, 
then this is just setting the variable, setting current index is now equal to this. But if you put two equal, this means does, if this is equal to zero, it's a condition that we create, then put the container. Otherwise, if we go at the end of the container, you can click on the bracket and you will see where it end. You see right there, it end right here. And you can put the, the column and this is the condition. So if I will go back, if this is true, then put the container. Otherwise, after the, the column, otherwise, then put maybe something empty and something empty will be a sized box. Sized box. We have already learned about this one. And this is asking to put a const. So we put a const before. I will format document. You know how to do this. And now, if we restart the app, uh, is it working? I will restart again the app. Oh yeah, it's perfect. It's just because if we are on the first one, it will display the container. Otherwise, it will display nothing. So we have two screen right now. And we have created a condition. This was the goal of this video. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, in the next video, we will continue to work about the basics of Flutter. See you in the next one. Bye. In this video, I want to show you how to add image inside your app because pretty much every app have some image inside. So let's do this. First, uh, we will go inside the other page. So the settings is where we have the size box. We will replace this by what we call an image dot network. Good. And image that, so just before, we have three options. We have the image dot, uh, we have four options. We have the image asset, file, memory, network. Network will be an image from the internet and the SRC is just the source of the image. So the URL, let me show you. So we have uh, Google and I search about Borealis. Now you will click on an image you will right click and you will say open image in a new tab. Good. Now you see this image have a dot gpg. That's perfect. But let's let's uh, th take another image, maybe this one, and I will say open in a new tab. I, I still have it. That's good. I will say open in a new tab. Okay. So you see this one? This one have a super weird URL and the end is not finishing with, uh, can I see the end? It's not really possible. Yeah, the end is not finishing with uh, PNG, GPG or something. It's like very weird things. Okay, I think this is like infinite or something. <laughs> I never saw this in my life, but whatever. Okay, yeah, perfect. The end is not finishing by GPG or JPEG or any normal size, okay? If it's not finishing by something like this, this try just to find another image that end with a JPEG or PNG. So you copy this, okay? And then you will go inside your, your quotation mark. It's important that you put quotation mark and you paste the image URL. I will put the hot reload and here you go. You have your image inside your app. This is super, super easy to do, okay? And yeah, this was the image network. In the next video, I will show you how to add an image, but not from the internet. I will show you how to add the image inside the code and how to use this image inside Flutter. So see you on the next video. Bye. Hello, hello. Welcome back. And inside this video, I will show you how to add an image inside your project Flutter. And then we will use this image to display on the screen. Ready? First thing first, you will need to create a new folder. For this, you can go at the bottom, you can click at the bottom, or you can, maybe we can click there. No, okay, so let's go at the bottom and right click and say new folder. And this one we'll call it images, okay? With a lowercase letter, and that's wonderful. Next thing that we want to do is to add an image inside this. So I will take an image from my desktop 
and I will paste, I will just drag and drop inside this. Easy, okay? You can do the same thing. Next, we need to put this image inside what we call the pubspec.yarn. Let's double click on this and let's discover this wonderful file. If you scroll down, you will find a section where it's called image, uh, assets, image, and this. Okay? What you will do is you will uh, go just before the A of the asset and you will delete twice. One, two. It's, it need to be exactly like this, okay? Because if you have one space uh, like this, it will not work, okay? Make sure to delete twice. Then what you will do is you will press right after the hashtag. You will click uh, to the right once and you will delete twice. One, two. Magnificent. Next thing you need to do is you will remove this and you will just keep image like this. This tail flutter that inside our assets of the, of the project, we have a folder called image, okay? And we have one called image. And you then, then you put the slash. That's mean every image that will be inside this folder will be accessible with flutter, okay? Next thing you need to do, I will move this. You need to press this little arrow get packages. So you click on this. If you use Android Studio, you can do the same thing, but with a command. If you go inside your terminal, you can say, so this is the same thing, clicking on, on the arrow or clicking or writing flutter pub get. It's absolutely the same thing. Good. It will refresh uh, inside the flutter project, uh, this file, the pubspec.yarn. I will, I will close this and I will close Galaxy also. Now we can remove what we have with the network. I will delete this. I will move this. And you can use instead the asset, okay? It's the same logic. You put the quotation mark first, but instead of being the name of the source, it will be the name of the location of this. So you need to say image, because we go inside the image folder, slash. I will write galaxy.gpg because it's the name of my file, but you will put the name of your file, good? And now if we restart the app, you will see that if we go inside settings, it work. That's magnificent. But if you have a problem, okay, because this can happen sometime when you add new file, and you add new image, you may maybe you will have a problem saying the image is not accessible. What you will need to do is close the application and relaunch the application, and then it will work, okay? Because sometimes it can happen. So the application will just relaunch, and I will fast forward. Good, the application has a relaunch, and we have the Galaxy image that is from our Flutter project. That's it for this video, and I see you on the next one. Bye. Right now, we are on flutter.dev, and I want to show you something that you should know that exists. First, on flutter.dev, you will go on doc, okay? Click on doc, and you will find a section widget catalog. If you click on it, you will find multiple uh, places where you can find more widgets, okay? If you click on basics, this is most of the widget that we have learned inside the first section of the course. You see, we have the app bar. We have used this one. The column is to put two widgets one over the other. We have the container that we have learned about this one also, the elevated button. The Flutter logo is super boring. It's just an image of Flutter. We have the icons. We have used icons. The image is network and asset. We have just saw this. Placeholder is super boring. If we go over it, we can see uh, what it is about. It's just a placeholder. So you will just have a box of uh, empty stuff. It's super useless. Uh, not useless, but I mean, for now, it's not useful. Then we have the row. We have C about this one, the text also, and the scaffold. So that's good. Let's cover a lot of basics. But the thing is, 
we need to learn a little bit more, I think, okay? Because right now, if we go back inside our app, so where is the application? Oops, we go back like this. You see, if we go on home or we go on settings, we still are not able to navigate through pages. L let's say, by example, this button click, change for uh, go on the second page. If you click on it, you should be able to navigate through another page. And in every pay, every apps, you are able to navigate through other pages. So inside the basics of Flutter in, of this course, we will also learn how to navigate through pages. Because I honestly think it's one of the most basic thing to know. So in the further video, we will learn about this and it will pretty much complete the introduction of Flutter basics. So that's it for this video. I just wanted to show you that you have access to the documentation, which is the Flutter catalog, okay? And the catalog, it is right there. And you can click, you can search if you want to, to learn more about widgets. By example, if you click on this one, you have asset bundle, raw image. And if you go on input, by example, I think we will add this uh, in the Flutter basics because this is kind of important. Not sure yet. Um, otherwise, we will do it in Flutter Advance. Uh, we have the form field. This is to put uh, something on the screen. So by example, the search bar, the person can put something in the search bar and search something. So it's kind of useful for an application. So this was the widget catalog. We can close this and I see you on the next video, bye. Okay, so in this video, you will see that the application have changed. And this is because the next video you will see is a little bit confusing, okay? And I understand this. So I created a new video that will have better explanation. So if you watch this one, it will be easier to understand how the concept of the next video will work, okay? Uh, so let's start right now. The concept of the video is about navigation. So how do we change page into a Flutter app? And right now you can see that what I have created is a very, very simple app with the material app, the scaffold, the app bar, the body, we have a center and an elevated button. So you can see we have the app bar, the body and a button in the middle. It's very simple. And now the, the goal, our goal is to navigate to a different screen. So what we will do is we will create another uh, stateless widget so actually, at this point, you should know everything that is inside this code, okay? We have see all the concept about material apps, scaffold, app bar, and everything. So what we will do is we will create a new stateless widget. I will go down and I will say stateless widget, this one, and I press enter. So now we can change the name of the class. We can say uh, second page, by example. And that's perfect. So I will save. And the next thing we need to do is to navigate. How do we do this? First, we need to create our navigator dot of context. And at this point, maybe you are a little bit confused about what is the context, but keep, keep, uh, keep watching. I will explain what, uh, what is the concept at the end of this video. Okay. So, uh, we can say after dot, push, okay? And push, the goal of the push is to push another page over this one, okay? It, the, the animation will look like the page come from the right, but it's actually putting a new navigator, a new page over this one, okay? Next thing is we need to give a route inside. So if you go up, you will see that the material app have an argument called route inside, okay? You can see this but we will not use the argument and we will create a new route because we need to tell Flutter, okay, we will have a new route, so we want to go inside another page. And for this, we can use the material route, uh, material page route, just like this. And inside we have a builder. The builder, we can see that it's a function build context. And the context and the build context is pretty much the same thing. I will show you. So. We create a function first. Oops, not like this. We create a function and I will remove builder inside. And you can see that we need to put a build context inside. So we'll take this 
And a build context is actually what we call a context. So this is the, the name of the class, and this is just context. By example, when we create an int, and this one will be an index, when we create something like this, we have the name of the class and we have the index. It's the same thing. So build context is the name with like int or string, by example, name. So build context is the same thing as this. And then context is the same thing as this. Okay. Just to keep things simple. Next, uh, I will put my semicolon at the end. Can I format document? Yeah, perfect. We need to put something inside this. So we will return, okay? And what we return is the other page. So I will go down, you will see that we have the other stateless widget, which is called the second page. So this is what we will return. We will say second, oops, second page. Okay, so I will put my, all my comma, format document, save, and I will put the const before. So I'm not sure if I have explained const yet in this course, but const just mean it's a constant, okay? And what does this mean is uh, Flutter will build it. So when Flutter build the, you, you can see right there, widget build, when Flutter build all of this, everything that is a constant will never be rebuilt if the screen change. So by example, if, uh, I don't know, you press the button and then you can see an image, this means the screen have been rebuilt, but everything that is a constant will not be rebuilt. Flutter will understand, so it will give better performance. Okay, so um, yeah, that's pretty much uh, it about the navigator. I know it's a little bit complex, but it's just navigator that of context. I will explain you what is the context very soon. We have the push to add another screen over, and we have the material page route. And at this point, you will see that if I refresh and I try, it will not work, and we will have an error. You can see we have a problem. Let me explain you why we have this problem. So what we are trying to do right now is, uh, I will go back, we have the main, okay? So if, if I go up, we have the main, and inside we try, we put the stateless widget with the material app, okay? So we have the stateless widget, the material app, the scaffold, the button, and the navigator that we try to go inside the other one. So when we press on this navigator, this mean, the route will change, and we actually take this and we go inside the other stateless, okay? But we lose the material app inside, and this is the problem. So what we need to do instead is we create the main, inside we have the stateless, we have the material app, and then inside this one we create another stateless, and inside this one we have, can I move? Okay, we have this stateless, the scaffold, the bottom navigator. So if I put them both side to side, you can see that in this one, we go straight to the stateless and everything is nested inside. But in this one, we have the stateless, the material, and then we add another stateless to have the navigate the scaffold bottom navigator. And when we click on the navigator, we go inside the other stateless. This means we go like this. And now everything is fine because we still are inside the material app. So this was our problem. So let's solve this right now. I will press play. I will remove the um, uncut exception. And this will just not give me error anymore. So what we will do is we need to create, we need to put the scaffold, this one, which is inside the material app. We need to put this one inside another stateless. So that's what we will do. I will create another class and I will call this one first page. And you will see in the next video, oops, uh, I will just use the command st stateless widget. Perfect. And this one will be called the first page. Inside, I will put all the scaffold. Okay, so I will remove the container and I will take the scaffold we have created. I will copy all of this, cut this, put it inside the return of the first page, build like this. And now inside the home, we can add the first page. This will be a const also. So what this uh, does is we, instead of doing this thing, we are, now, we are now doing this thing. So we have the material app and inside 
we go inside the other stateless, which have the scaffold. Great. So now it should work. If I refresh and I will press the, play, the, the button, you can see that the screen is black. And do you know why? That's a good question. Pause the video and try to figure out why the screen is now black. Otherwise, I will show you right now. So what happened is we are inside the first page and we navigate through the other, uh, the other page called the second page. But this one doesn't have any scaffold. So I will create a scaffold instead of the container. And if we refresh, now you should see we have the white screen, which is good. We can add an app bar. This one will have app bar like this. And I will save. And you can see that we can go back inside the other page. So when we press this button, we have this scaffold with the app bar and we have a button right there. But why do we have a button? That's because we are navigating and pushing another page over this one. And Flutter, remember that we have a page prior to the second page. So if you want to go back, Flutter will automatically provide you a button to come back. That's why. And you can, all, you can actually remove this button if you want by saying a bar leading. And we will say this as false. Uh, is it this uh, widget leading? I will say instead lead. I think we have something else. Uh, automatically imply leading. I would say this as false. Boom, we don't have the button anymore, but we can't come back, so we have a problem. So I will put it back. We can go back inside the first page and we can go inside the second page. This is the navigator. Now we need to explain about the context. You see, when every time we build something, we have the build context, context. And I'm sure you wonder, okay, but what what is the context? Why do I need this exactly? So I will bring back this. And the purpose of the context is everything that Flutter create. So uh, we go from the main, we go inside the stateless material app, and everything is nested one inside the other. But Flutter need to have some connection between everything. And if you don't have connection, how do we know if we have an arrow right there? So Flutter will not be able to build anything. And the context is just to tell Flutter we have the context and this is what you need to build. It's a bridge between each widget. Okay, that's, that is how is the most simple way to understand it. It's a bridge between every single widget. So what happened inside the navigator is we will say uh, push, we will say navigator that of context. So we use the context and we say we will push another page. So we will take this one, oops, sorry. We will take this one and we will go inside another page. But we use the context to tell Flutter, okay, we go inside this one. The context is just a bridge between each widget to make sure that Flutter build the, the page or the app in the good way. Otherwise, if we don't have the bridge, we don't have any arrow and we are not able to build any app. So that's why we need to always send the context everywhere we go inside our Flutter app. So that's pretty much it. I think we have figured out pretty much everything inside this video. It was a long one, uh, 11 minutes, and you will see the other video. I tried to explain you how to use the navigator, but uh, honestly, I think I, I do a, a pretty bad job at it. So yeah, that's why I did this video. It's The explanation seems to be much better this time. And you will see in the other, the other video, what happened exactly is I tried to use the navigator, but uh, I face a problem. So I will show you how to face problem in the other video, but it's the same concept. So that's it for this one. And I see you in the next video. Bye. In this video, we will learn about the navigator and the navigator will allow us to navigate through different pages. Good. First thing first that I want to tell you is there is two navigator right now with Flutter, okay? Because of Flutter 2.0, they have integrate the new navigator 2.0. The thing is, the navigator 2.0 is much, much more harder to understand when we start with Flutter, okay? The navigator 1.0 work super fine, okay? And in this course, right now we are on Flutter basics. 
and I don't want to complicate everything by showing you the Flutter Navigator 2.0. So we will do it right now with the basic Flutter. This module, we will do it with the Navigator 1.0, okay? You will see it's like way, way much easier. Let's do it. First thing first, we need to go inside, uh, by example, our button. I will, I will select the, the next button, uh, the button blue, and we'll change this for, uh, let's add first thing first, the um, quotation mark, and we will say next page. Good. This will now be a constant. And if you wonder why I know it, just go over, you will see prefer constant. Okay. Uh, so we would put back the constant and now the unpress will be something else. The unpress will be the navigator and what we will, oops, navigator dot of context like this dot push. Okay. It's very simple. Before we continue on this, we will need to create another page. So you can see right now we have my app, my app with the stateful widget. And this is what is considered like a page. Okay because we have this scaffold inside. So what we will do is we will create another state full widget. So another class that will have inside the scaffold. We don't need the material app. We just need the scaffold. Okay. So let's go down, down, down. And what we'll do is we will create a state less widget. So you will see state less widget, this one and you will press enter. This will give you the stateless widget. So what about the name? We will call this one next page and we need to do the same thing on this one. And inside we just put a scaffold. We already knew about this widget, the scaffold and the scaffold will have inside an app bar, the app bar argument. And then we have the app bar widget. We will keep it simple like this. That's it. Next, what we will need to do is we will need to go inside the push and inside the push, we need to say material page route, material page route, just like this. Next, we need to create a builder. So what go inside this, let's go just over. And you will see that it take a function build context. Okay. So it take a function. What is a function is this, this is a function. And then it take a function build context. So where it was, if I go over again, sorry. Yeah. Function build context. So we need to put the context inside. So I will say build context because this is what they want and we will put the context okay next we need to uh, so how can i explain you this you need to put the arrow just like this and this will return the next page what we have created the class we have created next page now we have two uh, bracket three bracket one after the other we will format document and you can see this will ask a constant, constant. Okay. So I will format the document again and we will restart the app. Just by creating this, it's navigator.ofcontext.push material page route. We have a builder that this is a function build context. We have the build context inside. So that's why we have this section. And this, this will return the next page. Okay. When we press on this, nothing happened. <laughs> That's uh, not supposed to happen. And why is this nothing happened? Let's wait a second. We will go. Okay. So after some research, I found the problem. Okay. And inside this course, I really want to show you every problem that we will face. So you know how to solve them. Good. What I did is I went into debug console. Then 
I add this thing, which is saying the context used to push the pop route, blah, 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 blah. I take all of this and I paste it on the internet. Then with this, I found Flutter Navigator not working. We scroll down and we find the first sensor. The first sensor is telling us, okay, so uh, you can either make a new stateless widget or stateful widget. Okay, so let's do this. I will put this down and now, and yeah, the error appear only when we press on the navigator. As you can see, if I press on it, boom, we have the error. So where where is our navigator? Uh, right there. We have the error that appear on the screen like this. Good. Um, so we will solve this. They say create a new um, a new state less widget or stateful widget. This is what we will do. I will make sure to have another class, a third class, and this one will be state full widget. And it is this one, enter. And then this one will be, by example, um, my app um, extension, whatever, good. And inside this one, we will put the scaffold. So I will go up. I try to go as slow as possible. We will take the scaffold and we will go down. So you can scroll, I will take all of this and you see the scaffold, it ends right there. You see the, the word scaffold? We take this, we cut this, and then we call this my app extension. Perfect. This is what they suggest to do inside internet. And we will replace the return container by the scaffold. I will remove the comma because we don't need this. And then we have some problem with the bottom name and with the current index. So what we need to do is go up until we find this information, these two variables, I will cut them and we will go back inside my app extension. And just before the override, we will repaste what we had. Good. This will solve every problem. And now if we restart the app and we try again, now it worked. Magnificent. So what was the problem is we needed to create another stateful widget in order to put inside the home. Okay. Because when we create a new stateful widget, this makes sure to create a new widget build with a new context. Okay. You will learn more about context later, but this create a new context. And you can see that inside the elevated button, navigator.ofContext. And this is why we needed to create a new state, stateful widget, because we needed a new context. I hope this was clear. And yeah, this is why I showed you how to do it. So see you on the next video. We will talk a little bit more about this. See you next video. Bye. In this video, I want to show you a super cool website called the Icon 8. Okay. But just before we do this, I just want to tell you that in the previous video, there was a little mistake and it's about the context. Why I, I by mistake, I put a Y inside context. It was not supposed to happen. It will still work, but it was not supposed to happen. Maybe you have seen it, maybe not. So let's continue. Um, on the website icon eight, what you will find on this website is multiple icons in illustration. Okay. These are both. I really like, let's say you say, welcome. Let's say you want to create a welcome page inside your app. You have some icons that you can use inside your app, which are pretty cool. Okay. And the next one is icons. So we will say maybe welcome. Yeah. Let's search about icons and you will see we have some icons. Maybe we can use one uh, like this to create our, let's pull out the, this, you see, we need an icon for our app. Uh, the application is right there. Okay. If you don't see it on the menu, you will find it in all your apps. I just put it there. 
we will need an icon for our launcher, okay, for our app. And we can find the icon maybe there if we want. So that was it for the, the tip. This is a very cool website. It's called the Icon 8 and you can find multiple icons or illustration. That's it. In the next video, what we will do is we will actually put an image on this uh, application. Okay, so see you on the next video. Bye. In this video, I will show you how to put an icon for your app instead of the Flutter logo. Let's start this right now. First, you will need to go on the internet and you will write on Google, by example, icon launcher Flutter. And we will find the link from pub.dev Flutter launcher icon. We click on this one. Good. Now this is to put, this is what we call a dependencies or a package. And we will use this in order to generate an icon for your, our app. Is the most easiest way to do it. First, we need to go on installing and you will take this, you will copy this. Maybe you will have a new, uh, the newest version, but that's good. You can take the newest version, no problem. You go back inside your code and we will go back inside the file pubspec.yarn. Did you remember this one? Let's click on this and we will add inside. So if we go back in the, the website where it is, okay, you see, they told us to put this, okay, under dependencies. Good. This is what we will do. So we have dependencies and we will add just under Flutter. So at the same line, we will add this. And next, we will click on the little arrow. And this will get the, this will get the package. Good. So we are waiting. It is currently doing Flutter pub get. If you don't have the arrow and you work with an Android studio, you can still do uh, Flutter pub get. It's the same thing. Good. So now we have it. That's great. What we need next is an image. And what I did previously is I went on the website. I show you uh, just the video before and I get myself an icon. Good. I will put this icon inside the image folder and I call it this icon launcher icon. Easy as this. And it's a transparent, uh, it's transparent, transparent behind. Good. Uh, so that's awesome. We have the icon that we want to put there and what else we need to do. So I will go inside the readme. Okay. This is all the step they ask us to do. We will go down. And they told us, uh, you need to add this. Okay. So we will add all of this. They told us to put the flutter launcher icon in under dev dependencies. Okay. Uh, we did kind of the same. We put it under dependencies is good. We will change it after maybe. And then we need to add also, uh, let's copy all of this. Never mind. It is because you see, they ask us to put it under dev dependencies. And inside this one installing, they ask us to put it under dependencies, which is not the same thing, but whatever. Uh, I will remove this one I and I will put it under dev dependencies instead. Okay. Um, I will remove this. And as you can see, we have Flutter test and Flutter launcher icon. We have also Flutter icon, Android, blah, 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 image path. Inside the image path, we need to put the path of the image, which is the launcher icon. And I remove this and I say launcher icon.png. That's awesome. Next, uh, I will click again on get package. And now we should have everything to set up the last thing. I will go back in the website. Now what they ask us in the readme. They ask us if we go down, run the package. So what we will do is flutter pub get, we did it. It's the arrow. And now we need to say flutter run launcher icon main. And this will set up everything. So we go inside the terminal and we paste this and we say enter. Good. 
I will take back the application. And now if we restart, if we restart, you will see that the app should not, yeah, you see the image is not there yet. We need to close the app. So we will stop the app and we relaunch it. And because we are not in the main file, the play button is not available. You can always use the run and start debugging also. So I will play on this and I will launch the application. Also, you see, we have everything done successfully. So you see successfully generate launcher icon. That's great. You will have the same thing. And now I will just fast forward until the application launch. Okay, the application uh, is ready. If we go back inside the menu, you can see we have an icon for our app. That's awesome. This is what we wanted to, to do for this video and we did it. So that's it for this one and see you in the next video. Bye. In this module, I want to show you one more thing uh, with Flutter, the basics of Flutter, okay? And this thing is how to turn anything into a button, okay? Because right now you can only use button like next page or click it, elevated button. But how can you turn, by example, an image into a button? Let's do this right now. Okay, so first thing we will do is we will go where we have the second page, which is settings, okay? And we will wrap the image asset with something called uh, another widget. So we'll say refactor, wrap with a widget. And we will use this time the gesture detector, okay? This will allow us to detect any click onto anything, okay? And now we have wrapped this with we have wrapped the image with the gesture detector. I will format document. I will put my comma because there's do there is two uh, bracket format document. And now we need something inside the gesture detector, an argument called uh, on tap. So we take this one. If we go over, we can see that this is a function. If we go over function, so we create an empty function. We know how to do this. And next inside this one, what we will do is we will change a variable. So we will call first the set state. If you remember, this is to tell Flutter to change something. And we will need to create a variable. Let's create a variable. I will say um, Boolean. I will create a Boolean. And Boolean is actually a true or false variable. OK, it's this is what it means. It's true or false. So I will say um, is click it by example and i will say uh, false this has not has not been clicked so i click on it i take this new variable that we have created we go down and we have uh, the gesture detector the on tap the set state and right inside the set state i will say is clicked okay is equal to so actually right now this one is false okay and we will say the invert of is clicked and i put my semicolon at the end so this is what it means the exclamation point just mean the invert the other thing okay or what you can do you can just say through but it will work only one time when you will click it will it will click but after it will not work so this will always make sure that every time we click, the variable is clicked will be the invert of what it was. So it, if it was true, then it will be false. If it was false, then it will be true. This is what it means. It's just the invert of this. I'm sure you get it now. Uh, okay, that's great. And what we will do is we will say, we will use a condition. We have already used this before and we can say is clicked. So if this is true, then we will show the image asset. And otherwise, we will put an image.network. And I have a source, uh, the GPG. You can just find an image on, on the internet, take the URL as I showed you previously, and paste the URL. I will format document, and I will move back this like that. Great. So you can see the, the URL is pretty long, but 
yeah, that's that's it. So I will format document. That's great. Let's restart the app and let's see how it worked. If we go in settings, because this is where our image is, we can see that right now the uh, is clicked is set as, as false, okay? So what this means is is clicked is false. So we will go in the second one where we have the image network. And this is the image I get from the internet with their URL, okay? So that's great. But if we click on it, boom, we change the image. Now the is clicked is now the invert is now through. We have set state to refresh the screen. And now the code will show this image and we can click as much as we want. So this is how to create a click or something that is clickable with the gesture detector widget. So that was it for this video and I see you in the next one. Bye. Hello, hello. This is a cheat sheet that I have created for you, okay? Because in the next video, what we will do is a practical exercise. And before we do the practical exercise, I just want to do a review or a recap of everything we have learned together. Good. And this is a cheat sheet. So uh, when you will try to do the app by yourself, the practical exercise, you can refer to this and it will be easier for you to, to just practice so you don't have to remember everything. And I don't expect you to remember everything. You will remember everything with practice. Great. So let's recap. Flutter doctor, it's a command that you do in the terminal. Okay, um, I don't know if you remember, but if you open a terminal, I will do it right now, super quick. I don't want to go in super long in everything. So if we do flutter doctor, you will see that this function show us if everything is installed successfully, if we have uh, things that work fine, and that's pretty much it. I think they show us also the version of flutter. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Then next we have Flutter create new app name. This is how to create a Flutter uh, a Flutter project uh, with the name called new app name. That's it. We have done this in the first video, I think. Also, we have the shortcut. We have the format documents and we the, the refactor. Okay, if you remember, we have if we click on something, by example, gesture detector. You can click and you can say refactor and this will be wrap and wrap with widget. Okay. This is the refactor and format document is the shortcut that replaces the text. So if you put, um, I don't know, like if I remove this, boom, you see, you need to put the comma between two, uh, uh, curly bracket, two brackets, sorry. That's it. Next we have all the widgets. The material app is like, uh, what you need to start with. You need to start with the material app no matter what. Okay, we will work on this later, but you need to know this. And you can see on the code, we start with the material app. So we have the main that run the my app. The my app start right there, which have the material app inside. Okay, we have the material app. Inside we have the home. In the home, we start everything, all our code. Okay, good. And next we have the second most important widget in Flutter, the scaffold. So if we take back the code, right after the my app, we have we have the material app. Inside we have my app X that this will return, if we go down, return a scaffold. So this creates a scaffold. And the scaffold looks something like this. It's the, the skeleton of the app. Inside the scaffold, you have the app bar, you have the body and the bottom navigation bar. This is the most important things. Next, we have the app bar. So I just told you the app bar is what is on the top of the screen. We have next the bottom navigation bar, which is at the bottom. We have, and these, these are widgets, okay? We have the icon, we have worked with that. I show you how to use icon. It's uh, just like this. You put icons, bracket, icons with the S dot something. Next, you have the center widget. So the icons is just to show icons in the app. I'm sure you get it. And next we have the center. This will put every widget that is inside this one 
we'll put everything in the center. We have also the elevated button, which is a button. We have the stateful widget. The stateful widget is, if I take the app, uh, it is stateful widget, you see? So the my app extend, extend the stateful widget, okay? And the stateful widget mean that the app can refresh. So if we go, you see when we click on this, this refresh, because every time we click, we ask Flutter to change the screen for something else. So this is the stateful widget. Stateless widget mean that nothing will change on the screen. So the screen will always be static, nothing will move. So maybe this page, nothing can change in this page. So this is a stateless widget. We have also the column. The column is to be able to place multiple widgets one over the other. We have the sized box. The sized box is just to put um, a widget with a certain width and height, and inside you can put another widget. We have also the row. It's the same as the column, but in the horizontal. Column is vertical. We have the container. The container is the same as the sized box, but you can put more inside. By example, a color or a different style. We have the image network to get an image from the internet, the from a URL. We have the image asset. If you want to use the image asset, you need to put the image. So if we go back in popspec.yarn, you need to make sure to have the asset image activated with the get package, okay? And we have the gesture detector. This can trigger a click or a tr trigger an action inside an app and you can wrap any widget with the gesture detector and it will work as a button. For the tips, we have the double infinity. Double infinity is to take as much place as possible. The condition is the um, is this. If you remember, we just did it in the previous video. It is, let me find it. Oops, what I did. Okay, we have the settings. Yeah. Is is clicked. If it's this is true, then show this. Otherwise, show this. This is the condition. This and this. Good. We have also the navigator dot of context dot push material page route builder context const and next page. This is I show I give you this one because this is hard to remember at first, and I understand this. And the navigator was I think. Um, it was for the first page. We have it somewhere. The nav yeah, right there. Navigator that of context that push material page route, and this is if we want to go like this in this page. Okay, is to change pages. We have also um, if I go down where it is, right there. Uh, we have also the uh, widget catalog. This is to find every widget with the flutter.dev documentation. We have the function print to print something in the terminal, like this in the debug console. And we have the set state. This is to uh, tell Flutter that we want to refresh the screen. So this is your cheat sheet, okay? And in the next video, you will do a practical exercise with Flutter. So I see you in the next video, bye. Welcome back. Before we move on on the practical exercise, I want to show you one little thing. It will be super fast. Uh, it is how to put code inside multiple different files. You see, we have the Dart, the main.dart, but how can you put your code into two files, maybe? Let's do this. We will go in library. I will right click and I will say new file. I will call this one maybe uh, next page dot dart. So make sure that all is lowercase and make sure to separate everything with the underscore. Great. So I press enter and you need also to have dot dart at the end. If you have Android Studio, maybe they will put the dot dart automatically, but on Visual Studio, you have to do it. Next, we go on the main and what we will do is we will go down until we find the section next page. Okay. You take all of this you copy this, I will cut it, okay? And then you will go inside next page and you will 
paste this. Great. Now we have an error. The error is saying uh, things are not searchable. Searchable. Okay. Flutter can't understand what is everything. To do this, you need to import what we call the material, oops, material app, uh, material.dart, this one, okay? You need to import this every time you want to use Dart inside a file. If we go inside the main and we go on the top, you will see we have it, import flutter material.dart. It was already inside the file when we started. That's why we didn't have to work, uh, we didn't have to add it. Great. The next thing you want to do is if we go back inside the main, we scroll down where we have the error. You can see your error on the side. Okay. We have an error with next page. The name next page isn't the class. How can we do this? We need to let know this file, the file main.dart, that the file can access the information inside the next page file. To do this, we go on the top and it's the same logic. You say import, okay? But this time, instead of importing a package flutter material.dart, you just say next page and you press control space and flutter will find it for you. Next page.dart. Great. Uh, also, you can create, by example, if you right click, you can create new folder. Okay, and I will say this one maybe next oops, next page also. And if we put the next page inside, and I will say yes, move. Okay, I will say okay, good. The main, you see the main have automatically put next page, next page. Okay, that that's mean you need to go inside the file and then find the file. Awesome. Uh, what else can you do is, by example, you could um, you could go back one file by saying two dots. This will go back one file up. So by example, it will go on the library. And then maybe you could say, li okay, yeah. So if you do that, it will still work. But you can, you could go back one file, go back two file, and you see nothing's changed. Okay, whatever. This, if you do this, is just to going back. By example, if you are inside the next page and you want to go back and then follow into the main, this is how you need to use it. Okay, uh, I will show you inside the next page instead. If I want to import the main.dart, access information inside the main.dart, I can say import and then I say two dots slash and now I have access to main.dart. You see? So that is how you access other files. And if we refresh, you will see everything work as the same, but it's just that now you are able to create multiple different files and separate and structure your code. So see you on the next video for the practical exercise. Bye. In this video, I want you to redo an application from absolute scratch. So you need to create a new Flutter project. You call it whatever you want, but you need to make sure to put an icon for your app and then inside this app, this is what you need to have, okay? I don't tell you much more. You can see no button are available, just this. Try to do it by absolutely yourself. And if you're not able to finish this by yourself, then on the next video, I will show you all the steps to produce this app. The challenge inside this one. Okay, first, uh, I need to tell you two things. The icon for the app is available in the resource and this image also, if you want to download them. So the challenge for this app, okay, will be to change the color of this section. Okay, so this is your challenge. Try to do, try to find on, on the internet how to do it, but this is the challenge. So that's it for this one, I think. And yeah, you can check the, the cheat sheet, if you want to have some help, you, sh you should actually check the, the cheat sheet in order to create this app. That's it for this video. On the next one, I will show you how to create everything, but try to do it by yourself first. This is the practical exercise. See you in the next one, bye. Inside this video, we will create the application from the practical exercise. 
first thing first, I will go inside the this and I will say uh, close project, close folder, I guess. Yeah, let's do this. Magnificent. Then I will go inside the terminal and let me tell you that you should be able to do it by yourself first. This is only if you are not able to do it. Watch this video and then try again by yourself. It's very important that you understand how to do this section by yourself. Okay, so I would go inside CD desktop and inside my desktop, I will say flutter create. So you can see that this is something from the cheat sheet. Okay, flutter create, um, I will say first app, magnificent. So this is creating a flutter app for us. I will take the file and put it right there so you can see it. Great. I will close this and I will open back my Visual Studio. I will say file and I will open folder. And now inside my desktop, I have first app, select folder. Great. Now I will go inside my library main and I will press start. Okay, so I will say start with the pixel two because this is the one that is currently open. Uh, next, you will need to go back inside internet where you have, if you remember, it is the Flutter launcher icon. So we have searched this on Google, Flutter launcher icon, and I will do this right away. I will go inside the installing. I will take this one, the dependency, and I will put this back on the side. Okay. And next, uh, we can call, we can kill this because we will need to restart anyway. So I will go inside the popspec.yarn. I will scroll down. If you remember, it's under dependence, dev dependency, right under Flutter test. You paste this. I will say Flutter pub, pub get, so get packages. And next, we need to do something else, which is inside the readme. We go, usually you should, if you don't know how to do this, you just read everything but I know exactly where it is, so that's convenient. I will copy this section, perfect, and I will paste this right under, like this. That's great. Now we need something called uh, an image, and it will be icon launcher.png. We need to create a file called image, so new folder, image, Boom, it has been created. And now I have two images that I want to drag and drop. You have the two images inside the resource of the course, if you want them. I will put my two images, the launcher icon and the win uh, persona. Great. Uh, we will go back inside pubspec.yarn. It is image, you just verify image and uh, icon launcher. So it's launcher icon. Never mind. Launcher icon. It's very important that it worked fine. Launcher icon. And next we need to go down where it is asset. We remove twice, one, two, and then we remove twice, one, two. That's great. And we keep only image with the dash. And this should, perfect. And we click again, get package or flutter pub get, okay? On the terminal. That's great. Now I think we can just run, okay, no, we cannot run the app right now. We need to do one last thing and it is the command flutter pub run flutter on try con main. Okay, this is the last we need to do. I will put this on the side and we go in the terminal and we put this command, we press enter and we should have a message saying successful. Will we have it? And success warning icon with alpha and not alloyed in app store. Successfully, perfect, that's great. Next, we go back, I will cl close this, close this and close this in the main. What we want to do, I will remove this and I will remove all of this, okay? I will just keep the first build just to make things clear. I remove this and I think that is great. Title, we will remove this one. Team data, we can keep it, it's not a big deal. Uh, we, we, we will remove it because we have not learned about it. But you can see that right now we have the run app, my app, the my app is the class that will return the material app 
which is the most important thing. And inside you have the home and something else. The something else, we will create a state less widget. So S state less widget, this one, I will click enter. This will create my state less widget. And next inside my class, I will call this one. Um, oh yeah, you can, you can press control D on Mac, uh, on uh, Windows to select both of, of them. And I will call this one, uh, I don't know, home, home page. That's great. Okay, next we can put home page. Magnificent. Inside we need to have a scaffold. And at this point I will run the app. And when the, the app is running, we will continue to code. We have the abar argument, the abar widget. So I will take the one with the, the bracket. I will have inside a title somewhere, title. This title is used with a text widget. Text, perfect. The text widget will have inside a uh, first app or my first app. Magnificent. And uh, what else we want? We want the body. So we will put the body. We will use the widget center. I know it's very fast, but it's just because you should do it by yourself. And this is just uh, a support for you to understand how I will do it. Uh, inside the center, we will put the child because the child will return a next widget inside. And we have the image.asset. Image.asset, which is the path to the image. It is image slash win PNG. Image slash win dot PNG. And now if we refresh, it should work. And while it's refreshing, we will go inside the material app and do you remember about the debug show check-in mode banner? We don't want this. This is disgusting. And we remove it. Next, we go inside the app bar. Inside the app bar, we have... Okay, I'm not sure I have told you this one yet. Okay, but you should be able to do it. Okay, why? Because inside the app bar, you can see that we have multiple arguments. Okay? And if you don't find one that makes sense, by example, if none of them make sense, you can go on the internet and search about how to change the uh, a bar color, maybe. So how to change app bar color flutter, okay? And this is what I want you to do, is to find yourself when you have problem, to, to, to find the answer when you have problem. And you see, first thing, how to change a bar color flutter, how to change a bar background color. Great, we go down, we have the first check mark, 69% say, 69 people said that this is great. So declare a color, primary color in the material app level. So you can go inside the material app or maybe you can go inside the app bar, background color, primary color. Okay, so let's take this one. I will close this and I will paste this. Background color, it is the argument and we don't have the primary color. So what we will do is we will use something that we already know and it is colors dot. So if you have colors, you can put uh, maybe, uh, I don't know, it, it was pink, if I remember, pink just like this. So we have created our first app by ourselves. Okay. It is a very, very basic app, but yeah, it's our, it, it should be your first app by yourself. So you should be very proud of yourself. And if you absolutely need this video to succeed this app, what I want you to do is to close everything. Okay. And redo it by yourself absolutely by yourself. And when you are ready and you have done it by yourself only, all the steps, then you will be ready to move on the next module. In this three hour video, we have learned how to install Flutter and the Flutter basics. This was just the introduction of my Flutter course, Zero to Hero. And if you want to learn more about Flutter, you can go on fluttermap.com or click the link in the description to have access to the full course. In this complete Flutter beginner course, Zero to Hero, we will talk about how to debug your own app, all the Flutter advanced widgets, 
uh, how to install packages, provider, provider is a state management. This will be used to uh, manage your data inside your phone. And talking about data, we will learn how to store data inside the phone with the local storage. Also, we will go on Firebase and learn about it. Firebase can be used to authenticate a user. So log in, log out and stuff like this. You can also use a database to store data inside the cloud. And you can use also the storage to store image by example. Then we will learn how to use an API and use the HTTP request with Flutter. Finally, we will learn how to publish our application because we want to publish this on Apple Store and Play Store. At the end of this complete Flutter beginner course, zero to hero, you will be able to create any application. And when you register to the course, you have access also to a private Discord group. I am very active on this one. So every time that you have a question, I will answer it. Again, at the end of this course, you will be 100% able to build any application with Flutter. I really hope this three hour Flutter course was helpful for you. You can click the link in the description to go on fluttermap.com if you want to have more information. And I wish you the best luck for your future project. Thank you so much for watching and I see you in the next one. Bye.